Bandwidth for First Updates Now is supported by The Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. But you know what? If you send me an email, you'll get a response and it will be from me. And I really don't have any desire to. You haven't watched the trailer at all? No, no. A lot of people haven't heard of the couch division. So it's a comfy division to be in, though. It's super comfy. Um, it's almost too comfy at times. Your response to, to teams who see that as a, a new potential issue with districts? Yeah, that's really a two prong question. Let's see if there's any damage from that fall. There was. They snapped 330. Still on their back. Six seconds to go. Four was the highest ranked. Right? Yeah. As, voted, as votes continue to yeah. pour in, everything kind of changed around the little yeah. bit. So we forget the First Updates Now is brought to you by Twitch. Fun is now a Twitch partner and offering some awesome subscriber-only benefits. Subscribe today or get a free subscription each month when you have Amazon Prime by linking your account and clicking subscribe. Coming up on First Updates Now Recap, week one is in the books. We're going to recap the past results, preview a few events to come, and wrap it up with the return of the FRC twat Top 25. It is back, baby, reporting for First Updates Now. I'm Tyler Olds. Mike? Mute He's time. Rookie There's was... always one at every party. Oh, Got my gosh. For him. I was, I'm turning into Justin, right? I can't talk. Uh, and I'm Mike. <laughs> I'm Justin. <laughs> <clears throat> Good start, guys. Way to go. <laughs> all right. And so we have Christina Tia back from Wordplay All Day, who's going to be uh, drawing up and giving away an awesome robot. So, Christine, welcome back. And which uh, robot will, will you be drawing today? And what inspired you to pick this one? Hey, guys. Glad to be back. Um, I am drawing 118's 2012 robot Endeavor. Um, it was the first 118 appearance in New England, I believe. Um, they came to the Connecticut Regional in 2012. And totally blew everybody away with their robots, so I decided to go with that one tonight. It was one of the coolest robots until it got deemed illegal. Yeah. With that with that uh, mechanism they had on the side, that was a really cool bot. Mm -hmm. And uh, don't forget uh, to be entered into the giveaway for today. Uh, make sure that you either follow or subscribe us or subs. Do you get five times luck in regards to getting in, unless you're Caltran, because apparently you can't win anything. Uh, but we love you, Caltran. Uh, you can subscribe for th for free through Amazon Prime. We're called Twitch Prime on here. Uh, or for just a few bucks a month, continue to support uh, First Updates Now and become a member of Fun Nation. We'd love to have you. We do also have a new Discord channel we just launched, so go ahead and check that out. Uh, you can type uh, exclamation point Discord, hopefully, uh, or it will uh, be posting cycling in Nightbot. Awesome. So as Tyler mentioned, uh, we're going to start off uh, with the recap of week one. Uh, we'll also give some of our own personal thoughts um, after, but with only 21 events this week. Only. Um, let's get, what's that? Only 21. <laughs> only 21, as it used to be. Um, we're going to get it. Um, we're going to get this started uh, kind of with the double decker event up in um, Duluth. Um, first, starting with Lake Superior. I said that right, right, Tyler? Duluth? Yeah, <laughs> Duluth, 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 Duluth. Double Decker. Yes. <laughs> this is probably just what I always say. All right, so up first is Lake Superior. So um, as I was looking up Lake Superior on the Blue Lines, did you know there's a Lake Superior Regional this year as well as a Lake Superior District event? I think it's like Lake Superior uh, really? State University District oh. event. But yeah, there's well, that's, 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 con that's confusing. It's going to be a little confusing. It could be. Um, so anyways, um, so Regional 1 in Duluth uh, featured 63 teams. Taking the number one seed was 5439 Chaotic Botics, uh, Robotics, excuse me, who were in the top eight in quarterfinals of, at this event last year. They selected 2052 Nightcrawler 93 to their alliance and took it to three matches in the finals to take home the win with scores of 291 and 309. Um, taking the re Regional Chairman's Award was 1816, the Green Machine. Um, who did not win a regional chairman's award last year, but did in 2015. Yeah, so for them, nice to have to kind of have that gold again. Got to give a shout out to my uh, all matter uh, 93 New Apple Corps. Congratulations go. on your regional win. All right. All matter. <laughs> so um, the second of two oh, Duluth <laughs> Minnesota regionals happening this weekend was the Northern Lights Regional. Kind of a side note, and Tyler, maybe I was going to ask you at the end of this, but just must be the crazy amount of volunteers that these two events bring in. Um, yeah, and it, it, it's nuts. 
Yeah, I was going to just say, yeah, it's absolutely nuts between this and the Minnesota uh, 10,000 Lakes and North Star Regionals, which are across the street from each other at the same time. Oh. Uh, huge kudos. Uh, uh, Lori Etchley, who is now the uh, lead volunteer coordinator for North Champs, is the volunteer coordinator for Minnesota, and she does an absolutely phenomenal job, along with uh, Mark Lawrence, who's the uh, regional director for up in that area. They really they get enough volunteers in, uh, and hopefully everybody gets the spots that they want. So there's two... This is also a side note. There's two separate weeks where there's two events going on at the same time. Is that is that what you just said? <clears throat> yeah. So you have the Northern Lights and the Lake Superior, uh, Lake Superior event going on in the same. That's actually in the same venue. Okay. Um, but literally, so it's kind of like at Champs where there's some sound spill and they're right across from each other. But pretty cool. You have two events. You can just walk over and see the other one. Um, and then you have the uh, North Star and Ten Thousand Lakes events that take place uh, across from each other, across the street from each other at University of Minnesota. Wow. So I was going to say it was like a throwback Tuesday, but when was all that like district event or the district paraphernalia distributed? Was that at th this event last year or these events last year, or was it at the oh, 2000? That was at the uh, Northern, uh, sorry, I always think Northern Lights. It was at the North Star 10,000 Lakes oh, event. Oh, the other at, one. That, yeah, oh, the yeah. six last year, yeah. <laughs> Let me be thinking of it. Anyways. All right, so anyways, 2987 Rogue Robotics took the number one seed at the Northern Lights Regional, and they selected 525 and 6758 to their alliance. This alliance would lose to the eighth seed. We'll see this again later, kind of a running theme, at least in the yeah. districts I covered. In the finals, we saw two versus four, and it would be 2509, 3130, and 6613, who took the win as a number three alliance. 876 Thunder Robotics would take the Regional Chairman's Award home with them, and congrats to them. So that kind of does it for our first two events of the year. Tyler, who do we got up next? Coming up is Palmetto, located in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, the beautiful area that it is. Longstanding Regional has brought in some fantastic teams, including 11 Mort, uh, 2016 World Champion, uh, Cleveland's team, uh, 343, 359, 1102, 1287, 2614, 3824, the list goes on and on and on. Uh, so 1876 Beach Botic, so not one of these teams mentioned, takes the number one seed, but they were knocked out by the number four lines in the semifinals. That number four alliance of 1553, 1287, and 283 will move on to face the number two alliance in the finals, consisting of 3824 HVA Rohatics, 359 Hawaiian Kids, and 1319 Flash. Three close matches were played. With the number four lines taking the first match, 236 to 227, but the number two lines would rally back to take gold with scores of 223 to 210 and 283 to 240. So congrats to them. Big congrats to our friend Glenn on 359. And the regional chairman's award going to the 2614 Mars. And entering inspiration would go to 3008 Team Magma on the Mexico. Hola. <laughs> oh, you're so, you're so sad. The Toluca Regional Mexico had 44 teams from across the country to our south, and after 10 matches, Bullock, 34-72, claimed the top spot. They were upset, however, in the quarterfinals by the number 8 alliance, who also took down the number 4 alliance on their way to the finals. The Cinderella run would stop there, however, as the number 3 alliance, 31-58, 59-69, and 47-23, took the regional win. And I'm going to try this in Spanish. Felicitaciones a toda la alancia. Así como al equipo 4401 que ganó al primo del presidente. Translation, nice. please. <laughs> maybe, maybe somebody to, else. <laughs> congratulations to that alliance as well as Team 4401, who took home the regional champions award. Dude, that was so funny. Yes. On our on our Slack channel this week, this weekend we were uh, we were talking about the um, the Mexico regional. And um, it was really funny listening in. He's like, El equipo cuatro, cuatro, cero, uno. Dude, it was a, dude, the Mexican region, all those, the Mexico regionals, because there's two of this year now, is it's a party the whole time. And it's, it's, it's so much fun. Like I was watching the Israel regional this morning and you just, I mean, it's literally, it's, it's almost way more fun to hear it in a language where you understand every 10th word because yeah, you're like, because yeah. you just pay so much more attention to it. Yeah, it's kind of cool. I just kind of picked that back up from uh, high school, so. Rip Justin, right. 2K17. All right, seriously. <laughs> Rip. Yep. Uh, Muerta. Uh, What's up next, Muerta? Mike? Muerta. Is that how you say the death or something in Spanish? Anyway. Um, all right. North, something like that. Dia de los Muertos. All right. So North Carolina Pitt County event in the North Carolina district featured 30 teams, but it was 37-37, the Robo Raptors, who took the number one seed, going 11-1. and one. Hey, look, a district got 12 matches. <laughs> 
<laughs> wow. Too soon in for that. I know. Uh, so they selected 2642 and 4290 and took the gold in six matches total <clears> in the playoffs. Congrats to 2642, who took the Kling Bling home with the District Chairman's Award as well. Nice. Um, and they also took home the Industrial Design Award. I'm not sure if that's given on Friday or Saturday, but um, if it was Saturday. They're, I think they're all on. They're all on the second day now. Oh, are they? Or yeah. Sunday, I guess, for districts. But, or Whatever it is, yeah. Sunday, but, um, so on to the Israel district. So finishing up their weird schedule as always, because it always messes with us, um, Israel entered their first district event with, quote, district event number one, if you look Good it title. up on, yes. <laughs> on uh, Blue Lines. So 1574 uh, made some heads turn with their frequent uh, 40 KPA auto that we saw. Um, really um, I was told, I didn't have a chance to look them up yet, but um, a really, really effective shooter that they have just to score some fuel in the boiler. So um, they took the number one seed and selected 2230 and 6738. Um, stumbling a bit in quarterfinal one, match number one, they won the next six straight to take home the win. Outscoring their opponents in the finals by a combined margin of 399 points. Wow. Which is completely dominant. Um, over the, That was over two matches. So they're, they escorted their opponents by an average of 200 points a match. Um, so they took home uh, the the team taking home the district chairman's award was forty five ninety green blitz. So congrats to them. On to Finn. Um, actually, one thing I just want to talk about because I was watching the Israel. I just happened to randomly turn it on and I got into the semifinals, uh, watching the Israel district. Uh, Fifteen seventy four. Now you guys can vote for them next week, and I, I think is is that there's three events Israel events all within seven days or something like that. It's oh, just really? consecutive, I think, for the districts. Yeah. Um, but you'll be able to vote for them next week in the FRC Top 25. It is the first time where I watched the match, and I was just like, wow. Like, that. this is all the people who are complaining about fuel not being scored in week one. This, I hope, changes your mind. Now, we saw a couple other teams that we'll talk about in, you know, in 33 and 118 scoring a few and, and a couple other teams doing that. Uh, but this is the team that they were consistently getting, uh, like, 35 KP in auto, even a couple times getting more. And... If they didn't get the f- enough KP and auto, they were able to score the rest within 30 seconds. It was absolutely phenomenal to watch. Yeah. Oh. Can't wait to watch it. Yeah. All right, Fim. So we always know Fim is a long run, so we'll try to keep it uh, condensed, but still cover everything that we can that we need to with it. And starting out in Fim is the Kettering event in Flint, Michigan. Uh, Kettering number one, actually, because I think there's a second one next week there. Uh, not as many notables as other events uh, with the 40 teams here, uh, but you did have uh, 70, 245, 26, 19, 51, 50, uh, and 54, 60 looking to take the field by storm. It would be, though, 26-19, the charge, taking the number one seed, selecting 50-86 Cadillac uh, Connectors and 52-15 Steagles to be part of their alliance. Scoring over 300 points in every match after quarterfinal one, the number one alliance charged in the finals to face the number two alliance of 51-14, 51-50, and 50-67. And one of the few events that featured the actually having the number one and number two seeds actually play each other in the finals uh, Red took the first match with a score of 309 to 250 and sneaked out a second match with a score of 310 to 305. Uh, DCA would go to 245 to Adam Bots and a nice cling bling there. Ding ding by 5086 Cadillac Connectors for the district uh, for the district win in the Engineering Inspiration Award. Next up is going to be uh, Lakeview. So th- Three FIM events this week. Uh, Lakeview taking taking place in Battle Creek, Michigan, with notables such as 830, 1254, and more. The number one seed was acquired by 3875 Red Storm Robotics, and uh, they would go on to select 830, the Rat Pack, and 5685 Robo Terriers. The number one alliance would quickly fall in three matches, though, against the number eight alliance, paving the way for the number two alliance of 4216, 5205, and 6053, and the number four Lions, 4327 Q Branch, 4003 Trisonics, and 5204 Robocats to meet in the finals. The number two Blue Lions would take the first match with a 330 to 265 victory, but the number four Lions would quickly come back with decisive wins in matches two and three of scores of 306 to 255 and 305 to 185. Number one seed Lions captain, though, did not go home empty handed as they did get the uh, DCA. And the Engineering Inspiration Award would go to 5980 East Grand Rapids Robotics. Congratulations. All right, let's wrap up FIM here. 
three events. That's actually not bad for Finn as we'll have more and more, I think, each week. Uh, but wrapping up Finn with number one be by far the most competitive event of the weekend in Southfield. An impressive list of teams, including 33, 67, 107, 548, 573, 2137, and 3538. Going with an 11-1 record in the quals, an incredible KPA auto. It was no surprise that securing the number one seed was 33, the Killer Bees. The surprise, though, would come with their pick. It wasn't 67. It wasn't 548. It wasn't the teams you would usually think of. But it would be a team who, had not, who has not won a blue banner since 2010. And Team 2960, Automation Nation, selected first and on the way back with the veteran Team 573 Mech Warriors, as they were picked up with the last selection. <clears throat> Number one Alliance cruised through the quarterfinals with scores of 397 and 356, but we know as they went into the semis, they meet some tough resistance against the veteran number four Alliance of 67, 548, and 1148. In the first match, we did see a bit lower score, 272 to 195, one Alliance still taking it over the number four. But the second match is where it really was. It came to a last second with only three seconds left 2960 Automation Nation took out the number four alliance and the number one alliance advanced to the finals to play the number six alliance of 1481, 4680, and 5467. The alliances would trade close blows with the number one alliance taking the first match with a 324 to 310 win and the number six alliance actually taking the match, match number two with 305 to 291. So as we get down to finals three, could have been another upset for 33, getting knocked out early at state last year, but it wouldn't be. It's great to see 33 back here with a 35 KPA in finals three. It took the number alliance with their climbs all the way to the win. Great to see 33 back with another fantastic machine this season. And the chairman's award would go to 548 Robostangs and EI would go to 107 Team Robotics. Now let's move on to the New England district with Waterbury. Hey, you should win the Waterbury Open tomorrow. We should. Anyway, <laughs> no, it's a Happy Gilmore reference. Anyway, 42 we'll teams. Some of the kids watching. <laughs> <laughs> they probably weren't even born when that was out. <clears throat> yes. Wow, that makes me feel. Anyway, 42 teams hope to get their New England district play off on the right foot. 34-64, Sim City seated first in Waterbury with 177 and 178. Uh, then Alliance would advance to the finals where they would eventually fall to the number three seed of 236. 36.54 and 181. Congrats to them as well as 1071 who picked up the district chairman's award. <clears throat> I just want to give a quick shout out to 1071. This is their first chairman's award win and it's very long overdue. So it's a pretty big deal for that team. Nice. Congratulations. That's awesome. Thanks, Christine. So moving on to my featured Granite State event or my featured New England event, which is going to be Granite State, brought 39 teams to Wyndham High School. Turning heads at uh, this event early in across FRC was team 5687, the Outliers. They're driving, they're driving and making mistake-free gear placement. They were the class of the event. Easily seated first and paired up with 1058 and 4908 and quickly dispatched the number eight and number five alliances on the way to the finals. On the other side of the bracket, the number two alliance did their best uh, to mimic what the number one alliance was doing. And 1084 or 2084, 95 and 3958 Set up a rare, actually, Tower mentioned this, maybe it's not as rare as we thought, but a rare 1v2 Steamworks showdown. Uh, in match one, the score was tied after Auto 75 to 75, as both alliances um, uh, got a rotor going and gained the mobility bonus. In Teleop, no fuel was scored, but gears were quickly transported by both alliances. The difference was the number one alliance was able to get that fourth gear going, earning the 100 point playoff bonus, taking the win. In match two, scores were, again, even out of auto, and both lines has got three road for spinning. Ready for, ready for takeoff points were also even, and the only thing preventing a tie in this match was 50 penalty points for the number two alliance to push it to a third and final match. The consistency of both auto modes were again on display, as, again, even auto modes meant the driver control period would decide the event. Like the first match, the red alliance was able to get that fourth road for spinning and take the event win. Congrats to that alliance as well as 34-67, the winning Wyndham windup in their district chairman's award. Well done, Justin. Thanks, buddy. I'm hanging in there. <laughs> You're doing great. And Happy Gilmore came out in 1996, by the way, so there's no way any of these students were born by that time. Wow. 
You should go watch it. It's yeah, a great gra- movie. Granted, we were only I was only like nine or something. It's a great movie. It is a little NSFW, just heads up. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. It's your parents. On to the Southwest Virginia district event in the Chesapeake district. Um, they saw 38 teams compete in Blacksburg, Virginia, but it was um, 540. Um, the Talon Godwin Robotics team, who took the number one seed, uh, they had no district wins last year, and they were ready to change that. They sucked at 587 and 3494 to their alliance. After losing to the number eight alliance in the first match, battled back through and got into semis, uh, where they would end up losing those two matches. Oh, I'm sorry. And in those two matches, it was on the finals to play the number seven alliance. So winning the first match, they lost the second, but won the third with the exact same scores as their first match. I think it was like 280 points. Um, so congrats to their alliance, as well as 1629 Geico, uh, for taking the district chairman's award there. Moving from one district to another um, in the Chesapeake district, we're moving over to Northern Virginia. We are just in Southwest. Um, so running simultaneously in the Chesapeake district was a Northern Virginia event where they saw 39 teams, which was one more than the, uh, the Southwest event. And it was 5587 Titan Robotics, who took the number one seed with a 1.66 ranking score. Um, they selected 1418 and 2186 to their alliance and took the dreaded ace seed upset. So this is number two for me in the quarterfinals. They passed this passed the torch to the eighth alliance who then passed the torch to the fifth alliance who then played the number three alliance in the finals and it would be the three alliance of 384 1731 and 44 72 who would take the win in three matches um 612 chantilly robotics would walk away as six district chairman's award winners there so congrats to them i, I just want to call out so <laughs> 1.66 ranking star what is oh that's 10 and 2 okay i was saying man that seems really low for the number one seed but when you when you don't have any other uh, uh, extra ranking points, I guess that makes sense. So all right, all right, let's move on uh, to the Peachtree District. Uh, let's shift gear and with the uh, Gainesville Gainesville event featuring thirty nine teams, including thousand two, thirteen eleven, sixteen forty eight, seventeen forty six, forty twenty six, forty one eighty eight, and forty four sixty eight. With Peachtree starting to establish powerhouse teams, it would uh, be a team that was never really been an alliance captain before. Uh, in an official event, at least, with 49-41 RoboBib, who would take the number one seed. The smart pick in 41-88 and rounding out 63-25, the number one alliance handily won the quarters with scores of 235-95 and 185-115. to After the winning the first semifinal match, the number one alliance hit a brick wall with the number four alliance of 16-48 G3 Robotics, 1746 Auto, and 832 Oscar, which kicked their alliance in gear with victories over the number one alliance in the semis, taking them to the finals. The number four alliance would face the number six alliance of 6705, 4112, and 4026. Number six blue would squeak out, squeak out a close match with a score of 257 to 255, but red came climbing back to take the Gainesville event uh, with a score of 306 to 256 and 255 the 155. Big congrats to the number four alliance and also 1311 Kell Robotics for the DCA and 4188 Columbus Space Program for the Engineering Inspiration Award. All right, so we're going to head to the Pacific Northwest uh, <laughs> and on the West Bay. I don't know if laughs every time I talk. It's really depressing. No, was, we can take was, over for you, buddy. No, I was imagining you saying pinu, pinu in that pinu, voice. Pinu, pinu. <laughs> Fem, <laughs> Fem is impossible. <laughs> anyway. The two Pacific Northwest events this weekend. The first we'll cover is the West Valley event. 30 teams competed for gold, and after 12 matches, again, the 12 matches, wow. 45 <laughs> 13 kept in the number one alliance, leading 32 38 and 41 04 to the finals to face the number two alliance in 1595, 5902, and 60 After two matches, the number two alliance was able to uh, make the upset and take the win. Congrats to them as well as 1595 for picking up the cling bling with their district chairman's award. My good friend Mike's going to help me out with my, <laughs> there we go. With my second PN, Pinu Pinu event. <laughs> oh, boy. Bro, make us all feel so bad for you. All right, so another featured event from Justin this week in the Pacific Northwest was the Auburn event um, in Auburn, Washington. So 40 teams played 12 matches, and with a ranking score average of 1.66, 49-15 Spartronics took the number one spot. They selected 58-03 and 32-23 and were destined for the finals, but not without some tough challenges needing three matches in both the quarters and the semis to advance to the finals. 
On the other side of the bracket, it was the number seven alliance making noise. 44 69, 55 88, and 46 81 would upset the number two and number six alliances on their way to the finals. In match one of the 1v7 finals, just 16 points separated the teams with 90 penalty points handed out. It was any anyone's match, but the number one alliance took the win. Um, in the second match, teams were even, 75-75 coming out of the finals. Uh, both alliances got three rotors engaged, but the Red Alliance was able to get all three robots ready for takeoff and in turn took the event win. Congrats to them as well as 1318 on their district chairman's award. And from one... What? Thank you. Did you say something? Oh, you're welcome, man. Anytime. So from one district to the next, we're going to go over to the H&H event. Um, so we would see 36 teams at the Hapworm Horsham um, High School to compete this past weekend, and it was 708 Hatters Robotics who took the number one seed. Hatters has won a district event um, every year since 2015, so at least one a year. I think they won the district Mar District Champs in 2015 as well. So definitely a team in Mar that has really been making their mark. Uh, they selected 1257 and 4373 to their alliance, um, but would end up losing to the eighth alliance the third time just for me that I've talked about that has happened this year so far this year. Um, we would see three versus four in the finals. And after four matches, yes, four matches in the finals, we would see number the, the number three Alliance of 3974, 2590 and 2539 take to win. I mean, what are the, like, what are the chances of there being a tie in this game? You know, just with, like, it happens, man. There's a couple of them out there. I just, it's just like, you know, what, like the one and what. So like, let me, okay, so the odds are actually pretty good if there's no KPA. Yeah. So if there's right. no ball that score, then the, odds, then the odds are out there that, that have that happen. I gotcha. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But yeah, just figuring that if, yeah, yeah, that would say it. Um, so 708 um, would go home with the gold, however, even though being eliminated in the playoffs um, by taking the district chairman's award. Um, so you guys covered H and H kind of on game day live. That's correct. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So any uh, any additional say, thoughts to H and H or, you know, why maybe any additional thoughts to have our horse first off. And then two, I guess you kind of answered my question. Why are we, or no, this is a different question. Why are we seeing a lot of one versus eight upsets? Or yeah. Just, so, um, I mean, the first thing, so Libby and Ben were covering, I was, I was doing the producer work in the background and, um, so I, I try to catch as much as I can during that. It's hard to do it from a producer standpoint. Um, but from the event itself, I mean, first off, uh, H and H, by the way, huge, huge, huge kudos for you for actually getting your crap together and having the events run in a timely manner, which was nice. I'm not a big fan because they reduced the, the amount of qual matches, uh, cause I know we had to start early. Um, but the the playoffs were extremely smooth so i just want to give them big credit because i mean literally compared to hub city that we did on saturday where we it was four and a half hours of coverage for the playoffs this was and there you know we didn't take as many matches as three uh this was much much more efficient uh so big kudos to them uh, for running the event except for the shame on you for uh taking away um uh events from district teams which i, I don't know why i care because i'm in wisconsin we don't have districts anyways um one v eight upsets so this is something that Karthik will tell you many, many times, and we talked about this on the sh on game day live when he was on Saturday. It's death by serpentine, and there, there's just you know from events wise, there's just there is depth in a lot of these events, but there's not enough depth by the time you get back to the number one seed, and so we're starting to see these number eight seeds uh, be able to pick up either a really good defensive bot or a good gear shuttler um, or something in that regard. I will tell you that, and I think that this is starting to be proven by like 33 and by Miss Carr, that by the time this game gets into it, its real meta phase, as we get you know into week three and week four, I think we're going to start seeing that die down a bit because as we start getting alliances who can get KPA and auto, number eight alliance is not going to be able to do that. Um, and having that bonus, what will essentially be 60 points, 40 for the KPA plus the 20 point bonus, uh, I think that's going to give number one and number two alliances a big edge. But for the first couple weeks where all teams are doing are is gear shuttling and then playing defense. I think it's much more attainable for number eight Alliance to win right away. I don't know what you think, Mike. Um, I think that's great. I mean, it's in the chat is blowing up and, and saying exactly, you know, why the, and you said it too, without the, without these teams shooting much or at all in the boiler, that's why we're seeing these ties and you're right. Like a good, it's, it's, you know, if you can pick up that good team while you're down there and the eighth can take, the eighth and seventh seeds can take these two robots in a row. You can really kind of pick up 
um, some of these good teams that are kind of hanging out there mm-hmm. um, and really just kind of put you over the edge over maybe the slim pickings that are, are left there, um, you know, by number one, especially at these district events, you know, that are only running 30 teams. You know, there's there's, you know, honestly, there's just teams that aren't good or team, you know, maybe yeah. rookie teams that have really struggled or really, you know, teams that are just starting out and don't have the resources to build like a competitive robot. So you just you don't have this much option. So, you, you know, and early on, like you said, early on at these small events, like the, the seventh and eighth team, while they're not getting a strong second or strong first pick, they're getting kind of two pretty good, you know, second and third or first and second pick. So, yeah, absolutely. And like I said, the game will evolve over time and a lot of, sure. including myself, we're quick to judge say, oh man, like, you know, this, there's no balls mean shot or anything like it's, it will happen. And the game will change a lot, even with only 20 point, <clears throat> even only with a 20 point bonus for reaching the kilopascal count. That's going to make a big difference because really it's 60 points with the balls being scored. Mm-hmm. So, cool. All right, let's move on to the Indiana Tip of Canoe event. Uh, really, the who's who of Indiana robotics, along with the sprinkle of Michigan, kicks off the Indiana district season with Tip of Canoe. Uh, in a district event with only 38 teams, the field is quite deep. We know we talked about this last week a little bit 45, 234, 461, 829, 1024, 1501, 1529. And 3940. And that's really just naming a few. There's some others in there that really uh, do well in Indiana. Uh, it would be a team, though, who has never won a blue banner before in 4272 Maverick Boiler Robotics taking the number one seed. They'd go on to pick uh, 1501 and 447, both good looking picks. Uh, losing one in the semifinals, though, the number one alliance would limp in to face the number three alliance of 234. 1018 uh, Pike Robo Devil, sorry, 234 Cyber Blue, and 4926 Gallic Tech, who soared their way into the finals. So one versus three going into the finals here. All matches were close, uh, so close that there was actually a tie in finals match one with a score of 255 to 255. Uh, but it'd be the number three Blue Alliance who'd take the next two matches with scores of 250 to 255, strike that, reverse it, uh, and 307 to 250. So very close matches in the finals. Chairman's Award would go to 868 Tech Hounds with an engineering inspiration award going to 1747 Harrison Boiler Robotics. Uh, So what's going up in the uh, north land of Canada? Hey. (laughs) All right, so this was uh, originally Justin's where I'm take this one too for him. Um, But before I do that, Christine, can you show us how, how your drawing is going? I'm really curious. Yeah, sure. There's you a lot of do this every progress. once in a while. Yeah. Uh, wait, put it close to the camera. I'd say check in, but we could get sued. Ooh. <laughs> nice. Nice. Great job cool. so far. I'm going to win that. It's, I think it's my I'm going to win it. <laughs> it's time to be uh, internally given rigged. away again. We need a <laughs> rigged emote. <laughs> yeah. I'm overdue. All right. So uh, the Ontario Durham College event. Um, so the first ever Ontario district, this is, I think we talk about this later, maybe when I are in the top 25, this is huge. This is like, this is a big turning point for, you know, for, um, <clears throat> for Ontario here. So this took place over the weekend. Um, 41 teams, t- uh, descended onto Durham college to fight for that cover the blue banner. Like the first ever district win, I think is a big deal. Yeah. Um, with some Canadian power on the sidelines, this event was a chance for the depth of Canada to shine. After 12 matches and a record of 10 and 2, 45 25 Renaissance Robotics uh, took the number one spot, uh, narrowly beating out 1285 the Big Bang. 45 25 would choose 2609 and 4914 to join them. After winning their quarterfinal matchup, the number one alliance found trouble in the semifinals, losing to the number four alliance of 2200. 77 who and 6323 um, who would advance to the finals and the opposite bracket. The number two Alliance was showing its power, putting up scores in the three hundreds as it would advance to the finals to face the number four Alliance in match. Number one, a little fuel uh, was scored to give the edge to the number one Alliance 82 to 75 coming out of auto. Uh, the number four Alliance would show some of their fuel ability as well, adding 13 fuel in the high goal. Um, it would have been a slight 259 and 264 win for the number two alliance, but 30 penalty points propelled the number four alliance to the win in match number one. Needing a win in match number two, the number two alliance was only able to get two rotors engaged for um, to the three for the red alliance, but they climbed out, uh, but they outclined them 150 to 100 to take the win 277 to 259. In the decisive match, the score was again 82 to 75 coming out of auto. Both alliances achieved two rotors, but the number two alliance was again able to outclimb the number four alliance to take the win, 262 to 209. Congrats to them, as well as 772, who picked up the district Ooh. chairman's award. 772? 
seven, seven, two. <laughs> All right. So we do actually have somebody uh, who was at that event. Uh, he was uh, actually on our show just a few weeks ago, but we want to bring him back on to talk a little about the event and uh, what his experience was. So I'd like to welcome back once we get him on. Uh, Soeb from uh, 5036, the Robo Devils. So let's yeah, see if yeah. we can get him on air. Welcome back here. Uh, we did. We just talked about the uh, latest Ontario District event. It just started this year uh, up at uh, Durham College, and we figured we'd bring one of those uh, team members on who actually competed at this event right here. Uh, so why don't you introduce yourself? Let us know uh, a little bit about your team. Yeah, so I'm Sohib um, from Team 5036. We're a fourth-year team out of Scarborough. And, uh, yeah, we just competed at the Durham College event this past weekend. Yeah, so hey, and you guys were the uh, captain of the number three alliance uh, this year, and you went to the uh, semifinals. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Ended up losing to the finalists, taking it to the third match, or the f actual winners of the competition. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, they actually won the competition. So you know, if you're gonna lose to somebody, you might as well have it be the people who actually won, right? That's how uh, I always exactly. Feel about it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so let's talk uh, a little bit about, uh, I know we were talking pre-show a little bit um, about some of the experiences that uh, both your team had, uh, some of your thoughts about the events in general and what maybe other teams can learn, both good and bad, uh, from the event. Uh, so, so why don't you tell us a little about kind of your experience and maybe some advice you can give to some other teams? Yeah, so uh, week one, like right at the blocks, just teams just trying to get their um, thing going. Um, early on, there's a lot of attempt at balls being shot and Towards the end of the event, there's a lot of these teams that had their whole shooter mechanism just taken off the robot to help with other things. Because um, really, like, I don't think there's probably more than 10 pr pressure points built up in any qualification matches and probably around that el eliminations as well. Um, generally, it was just a typical strategy. Get your three rotors going and have have the better climb. Um, from what we noticed, uh, like, our first day, uh, like, we tied our first match. So that's the point where Fio would probably have helped us uh but then again we it was like a one team alliance the other team kind of they're having communication issues and another team was bypassed so if we did get the mobility points out it would put us ahead but yeah we started off slow it was like we ranked 17th and then for the majority of the first day we were holding the first rank at the regional um and then to or the event and then towards the end um we ended up losing matches that we would have thought that we should have otherwise won but again it came down to the climb and Climbing like last 15 seconds of the mm -hmm. match, um, just the big match swings in this game. So yeah, the main thing coming out of here, get your climbs consistent. Yeah, absolutely. And as you guys look at, uh, when do you guys compete, Max? What's your next event? Uh, it's actually this week. Uh, this week. Oh wow. that's yeah. right. I remember <laughs> us talking about this previously. Um, so with such little time, you guys will have that unbagged time to utilize. What are you guys gonna be doing during that unbagged time to, to kind of reprepare yourself and get yourself tuned up for the next event? Yeah, so we were looking at um, uh, just our robot in general, looking at the footage and stuff. So there's a, uh, more drop gears than we would have liked, and our climb wasn't consistent. We wanted to be doing it 100% of the time. I think it, at the end, we we're probably doing it 60 or 70% of the time. Um, so we had the typical Velcro climber. Um, it would work perfectly fine from the two side positions, uh, so the two side uh, ropes, where you can sort of get that tension on the rope with your robot going up to it. But on the center one, we found it really hard to actually get that Velcro to catch. So mm. we're actually getting rid of the Velcro altogether for in favor of one of our other prototypes, which just involves basically a knot and like just something that catches the knot. Um, same drum, same system, but yeah, just getting rid of the Velcro. And yeah, with the drop gears, we're going to have, we had this uh, plan, but we couldn't get it done in time for week one. Um, it's basically a fold open flap uh, to help us take in the balls from the, or sorry, the gears from the feeder station. And it also closes onto the gear to prevent gears from falling out uh, while we're driving. So one thing I want to ask you guys, do you know, did you have any uh, four rotor matches uh, up at uh, Ontario? We didn't. Uh, we nearly did in our last match, though. So that was uh, with us, uh, Team Dave, which we ended up yeah. picking as our first pick, and Team 781. So we got, uh, we got the 11 gears up, and we're like, okay, there's like, 45 seconds to go. Perfect. We're getting uh, this next rotor up. So um, 781 comes back. Uh, they're about to put their gear on. Um, but the again, it's with the spring. It, was, it wasn't really all the way back on the spring. So that gear ended up dropping. Uh, no problem. We're here. We, we got our gear. We're just rushing back because we wanted to climb as well. Because the scores are pretty tight. So I'm like, guys, we have to climb right yeah. after this. Um, so we, we go for that gear. And boom, we just bang into, uh, bang into like another robot. And we lose that gear. 
So there, there's two gears that were actually dropped. Um, oh, almost yeah. got the four rotors. I don't know about any other matches, but we nearly got the four rotors there. Yeah, you guys, you guys were definitely close, and we'll look forward to uh, seeing that uh, with you guys this next weekend actually coming up, uh, which should be a fantastic event. Yeah, it'll be what, awesome. What, what is it, Ryerson this weekend? Yeah, it's Ryerson. Yeah, right. We might actually we might cover that for Game Day Live. So that that looks to be a phenomenal event. So. <laughs> And if you haven't seen, I don't know, I'm sure, I don't know if you guys have watched your own replays yet of the event, but man, first Canada, their camera work looks phenomenal. It was a very gorgeous feed they had all weekend. So kudos, kudos to Sean and everybody else doing it up in uh, first Canada. Uh, hey, before we let you go, uh, I just want to ask you, I mean, from a district event, so you guys have never done districts before, it's your first one. Uh, how did the district feel compared to going to a regional previous years? Yeah, so I know one of the things First Canada tried to do is try and preserve as much of that regional experience as possible. And the venue this year, Durham College, was the exact same venue for the oh, Toronto East yeah, Regional. Yeah, they're, they're all in colleges, was. aren't they, I think? Uh, no, there's a couple, uh, at least one that I know is in the high school. Um, okay. That's the Victoria Park one. But yeah, it felt just like a regional to us. And like you said, the AV quality was just superb. And yeah, kudos to Sean and them for getting the event as good as it was. You guys have one of the best DJs ever, so... <laughs> <laughs> who's that uh, DJ I'm actually not sure it's the guy who does all their music and all the sound effects and everything up there oh, sure. I remember his name Justin do you remember his name I don't know I don't <clears throat> he's awesome picture. nonetheless he, the he's, the D, he's known by DJ that's all I need to know DJ but yeah guys check it out yeah. uh, so good luck to you guys in 5036 uh, this upcoming week at Ryerson uh, so hey thanks for coming on the show once again buddy good to, good to talk to you absolutely take care guys thanks so much yep thanks good to talk to you again very cool all right, so moving on, South Florida. Um, so we kind of highlighted uh, this event of interest last week, and uh, I'm just going to kind of talk about it like every other event, but then we're going to um, cut to uh, um, Christine here at the end and just kind of see what she thinks about it. But um, <clears throat> So we saw 47 teams compete, but it was the second-year team, uh, CIP, uh, I think it's 6011, who took the number one seed. Um, guys, this was really cool. So CIP was dead last at the South Florida Regional last year. They were 60 out of 60 teams, um, the 2016 South Florida Regional. This year, they went to first, number one seed. So I think that was really cool for them to go from last to first. Um, <clears throat> so they would select their alliance and be knocked out in the semis by the number four alliance of 3652, 386, and 6388. That alliance would face the number three alliance in the finals of 1523, 125, and 6404. Well, the number three alliance took match number one, but the number four alliance eked uh, out a win by three points. But it was the number four alliance who took the rubber match in the win. So congrats um, to them, as well as the 694 Sty Pulse, like High Pulse, for taking the regional chairman's award. So, Christine, you guys were down there. Obviously, your robot made it through customs uh, <laughs> or through the airport, at least. <laughs> through, through TSA, yeah. <laughs> yeah, through TSA. Hey. Um, tell us a little bit about South Florida, if you could. Yeah, it was an awesome event. Um, the... The Florida regionals are always awesome. The volunteers are really dedicated, and the the energy down there is unreal. You have so many teams from so many different countries. Um, we were lucky enough to compete with one of the Brazilian teams, a rookie team, um, in the elimination rounds, and they actually ended up winning Rookie All-Star, so we're super happy for them. They're going to be going to champs this year. Um, like you've seen at other events, I mean, there were a lot of ties. You saw so many alliances that were just maxed out at their potential at that point, and I think it was the semifinals went to several tiebreakers. So us being able to, you know, score fuel was definitely a huge advantage. Um, but the hangs in the elimination rounds were like do or die. Um, not so much in the qualification rounds, but definitely in the elimination rounds. If you didn't get your hang, you were you were out. So I'm sure we'll see more of that as we continue through this week's events as well. Sure. Christine, can you tell us a little bit about what it was like to uh, uh, work with the team from Brazil there, especially as a, you know, you have a rookie team and a foreign team, which can be an interesting combination for that. I mean, how was that experience overall for you? Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, we have a, we had a new drive team this year, but I mean, Brando's a very experienced coach and he said that he was just absolutely blown away by the fact that they were not at all phased by the quick turnaround rate. Um, you know, they were charging their batteries, their pit crew was ready. Um, when we had downtime, they were Skyping their friends back home, showing them like the field and being like, look, you know, we're in the finals. This is awesome. So, yeah. I mean, they, they did not 
look or act like rookies. And the way that they performed, like they knew the strategy and they stuck to it every single match. Um, so, I mean, they're going to do great. I don't know what event they're going to next or if they're going to another regional, but if they do look out for them because they're definitely ready to go. Probably like, probably look that up there. What, what team was that again? 6404. 6404 Brazilian storm out of yeah. uh, San Jose dos Campos, San Paulo, Brazil. Perfect, and Tyler. I tried. <laughs> no more events this year. Yeah, you so said you said they're going to champs, though, huh? They are going to champs. They got rookie all star. Yeah, I mean, good for them. Yeah, congratulations. Awesome. Hey, thanks for that feedback, Christine. Thanks. We're and so good. Go, go like the 125. You know, when's your guys' next event? Um, so we're actually competing at the district event that we run next week at Greater Boston. Um, and we're running an event this week down in Bridgewater. So busy, busy, busy. Busy, busy is right. <laughs> and last thing I gotta ask you guys. Um, so from your your shooting when you guys had your reveal video, obviously it's always different, a little bit different when it translates onto the field. But uh, what are you guys looking to do to improve your uh, your shooting ability? Yeah, so um, at the South Florida Regional, we saw 179's robot up close. We saw a lot of other robots that had great um, gear mechanisms. So the students were really focused on, you know, how can we get a much more accurate stream out of our robot? So we put in a McMaster order probably, you know, the day after the event ended to try to play with, you know, how can we make our ball stream a bit more consistent. Um, we definitely had a rocky start to the event, so we were really thrilled with the outcome of the event overall. So they're definitely going to be working on the shooter. Our programmers are going to be continuously working on autonomous. Um, our vision tracking actually kicked in by the end of the event, so we'll just continue to work on those things and get that KPA bumped up a bit. Step by step, right? Yep, baby steps. So you uh, made, placed the McMaster order a day after the event. And you got it, what, eight hours from then? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> the McMaster car is always like, it's so crazy. We always joked in high school that they had like people just waiting at the printer ready for like the, the, <laughs> the print op, run and grab it and ship it like right away. Seriously. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, Christine. Thanks. All right. Let's round out our events this week with the Hub City Regional down in Lubbock, Texas. With 46 teams, this event was absolutely jam-packed, especially with some superstar teams, 118, 192, 624, 1477, uh, 2468, I almost said it wrong, uh, 2481, 3847, just to name a few in that. And as we go into this event, we know that many eyes uh, were locked under the Robonauts with their incredible real videos that they do. Uh, and the 2016 World Champions, uh, 2041, the Roboteers, but it was actually a team who's consistent in gear delivery in 3366 Plowbots who would take the number one seed and completely throw off the entire Alliance selection as they as they scorched the second through four seeds from picking each other. So 1477 declined, 118 declined, uh, and 2481 declined, which really put an interesting flux in it. I know some of those teams were really looking forward to working with each other. Uh, perhaps, though, a good reason for declining that team uh, as the number one seed uh, lost in three matches in the quarterfinals against the number eight seed of 1817 Lano. Uh, let me get this Lano Ascarado Robo Raiders, uh, 935 <laughs> Rail Robotics, and 4063 Tricks Are for Kids. I know I rolled that R at the end, I couldn't help it. <laughs> Translate for, you know. Hispanic to English, it was hard. So uh, in an event where there were uh, five out of seven of the playoff groups going to three matches, it was a long day. Uh, it was back and forth the entire way. Some absolutely incredible matches, especially from the semifinals on. Uh, probably one of the biggest surprises, though, was uh, seeing 118 come very, very, well, very close to destroying the robot after their climbing strap sheared off twice against the Davit, uh, landing the robot both on their side and actually completely upside down. If you haven't seen the picture, uh, go to the first updates now, uh, either Twitter or Facebook page. We have it posted on there. Literally, they land upside down. They became uh, team number 811 temporarily. And they're, <laughs> yeah, I mean, they were, and 118, you know, they, they had some issues. They, you know, they were able to get some of their shots on for KPA around like 20 or so in auto. Uh, but we'll talk about them a little bit, uh, especially as we get into the top 25. But along with smart defense, uh, this, uh, that took place in number two, uh, alliance of 1477, 3847, and 158 went into the finals. But if we look on the other side with the number one seed defeated, uh, the number eight seed had to go against the number four seed, which is captained by the world champion of 2041, along with 2341 and 2395. Consistency and some amazing defense 
uh, played by 4063 Chicks Are For Kids, completely shut down the number four alliance and took the number eight alliance into the finals. And what an amazing finals it was that we saw here in match one, the number two seed uh, seemed to be able to finally go around the number eight. Uh, one thing that Carthen and I talked about in Game Day Live is it seemed to take forever for Texas Torque to figure out that they could go around the other side and they just didn't have to plow through <laughs> the defensive robot. But they did end up getting it, uh, winning the number one or winning the first match with the score of 265 to 231. However, though, in match two would be a different story as the Blue Alliance was unable to secure a third rotor and a third climbing robot where the number eight alliance uh, took match number two, 284 to 195. Match three, though, was completely down in the wire. The Blue Alliance took a quick lead with a rotor and autonomous, and with over a minute left, 1817, actually it was about, I think, 115 seconds left, 1817 lost connection on the robot and didn't recover the entire match for the number eight Red Alliance. So two robots playing for the number eight Red Alliance with uh, close to two minutes left. Amazing defense. An unfortunate slip up over on the blue side. 159 got stuck on a gear, uh, which kept uh, both teams from only scoring two rotors. And then 159 with a free climb, unfortunately was not able to get it. That would have put them over the top, having three robots climbing over to it left to a messy but well-deserved victory for the number eight Red Alliance. That's right, folks. Number eight Red Alliance at Hub City. Nobody expected this result coming in, into the event, let alone coming to the playoffs of the event. When you looked at these seeds, uh, I really got to give a huge shout out to, though, uh, to Trickster for Kids. They played some of the best defense I've seen in first. Absolutely shut down other alliances. They figured out the lanes. Uh, kudos to them and kudos to number eight alliance and a big congrats to 624 kryptonite uh, for their regional chairman's award and a double si silver cling bling the 3847 spectrum with a finalist and engineering inspiration award win wow to be in the chat guys. frc 811 <laughs> rip <-o> nuts. <laughs> rip <-o> nuts. <laughs> show title <laughs> <laughs> fantastic so Hey, uh, you know, before we uh, get into the top 25 and stuff, uh, we just want to preview a couple events. We're not going to take too long in this, uh, but some events that we have our eyes on, these aren't ones we're necessarily doing game day live for, but a couple we kind of had in mind. Uh, so what are you guys looking at for week two? All right. So first up, I, I wanted to take a look at Dallas. Um, we saw some of our favorite Texan teams battle it out on this past weekend at Hub City. Um, and this week we get to see some more. So this week we'll see teams 148, 1296, uh, 2468 again, uh, 2848, uh, and many more competing. Um, so while you're watching Game Day Live, keep a tab open. Um, you know, keep your eye on on, um, on Dallas this weekend. We'll kind of get to see just about. If, I'm trying to think of who else we're missing. Just about everybody else. Uh, from Texas of interest um, competing again. We've seen 118, uh, 624. We'll see 148 this week, 1297, like I said. So um, Dallas, I'm going to keep my eye on. Um, as always, you know, 148 puts out a, a stellar robot every year. We've seen their release video for Rogue. Um, we're very excited to see them. Um, and that's it. Yeah, and, and Nick, our producer, is actually on 148. And uh, Nick's telling me that their robot is literally, it can do everything in about 30 seconds. So I know he can't defend himself there, but make sure you, if they don't do everything in 30 seconds, make sure you uh, just totally call out 148 on it because <laughs> they're, they're going to do everything in 30 seconds there. Nick assured me. Yeah. Thanks, Nick. Appreciate it. Nick, our producer behind the scenes. Thanks, buddy. Oh, thanks to Nippin too for uh, 3310 breakaway. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. All right. Uh, our uh, our next one is going to be that we're going to look at is going to be the Arkansas's Rock City uh, Regional. Let's take a closer look uh, with uh, over 51 teams. Uh, really not looking disappointed. The cool thing about Rock City is it always seems to get teams from out of state uh, from a, a good reach. So you got the hometown favorites, 16 Bomb Squad, 39-37 Breakaway. Uh, will always be interesting to see play, but they're also joined by 141 Wobot. Uh, Mississippi teams, 364 Team Fusion and 1421 Team Chaos. And I really got my eyes on 3310 Blackhawk Robotics uh, competing here instead of in Dallas this weekend. Uh, I'm really looking forward to a strong emergence from 3310 uh, as they prep the, for their other events in Texas this year. And I could see them pairing up uh, with actually 3937 Breakaway. I'd like to see them form a strong alliance. We'll see how that goes. You know, I've been a longtime fan of 16, uh, and you know that you're going to see them go deep in the playoffs or at least get in the playoffs and well. But with new challengers in the area, it's going to be interesting to see how deep in the playoffs 16 can go this year. So take a look at the Arkansas Rock City Regional. So last for recaps, I'm going to talk about the Orlando Regional. 
uh, well, I don't know if you can call this talking, but I'm trying to discuss it a little bit. You got it. The CFP Arena will welcome 63 teams this weekend in Orlando as week two of Steamworks gets underway. Several good teams will be bringing the robots to the field for the first time, including 180, 108, 801, and 1582, as well as teams who just competed last week, late 233, and who won just last week, 386, Voltage, and 3653. Um, as well as the Rembrandts from the Netherlands, who've enjoyed a nice stay in Florida between the two weeks. So that'd be pretty cool. Um, so it's going to be a really good mix of teams who have some experience and some teams who've been, who, who will be playing for the first time. So it'll be interesting to see how quickly those first event teams kind of catch up and learn from the experienced teams and the way that's going to impact the qualification and, more importantly, the elimination rounds. So it's going to be a fun one to watch. Absolutely. Um, hey, breaking news here. Team update 16 just came out. Uh, Nick, if you can bring that up on the screen there, if you're not so mad at me uh, for talking up 148 <laughs> too much. Uh, but so some interesting things on here uh, that there is it kind of, is this retracting what they said before? Because now it says, keep your limbs safe uh, and reach outside the port, except for incidental and brief excursions outside the port and above the deck. That's what the update was before. Reaching outside the port to retrieve a gear is in violation of C, as retrieving a gear is not manipulating the carriage assembly. Reaching outside a port to untangle or pull a pull cord is not. Okay, so now you can you can reach outside the port if it's not for a gear, if it's for the pull cord uh, or, or to untangle that or something like that. But now for the gears, it, they're basically saying you're doing it wrong if you reach outside trying to get a gear. You're reaching over to get it out. Yeah, well, if you're reaching through, so like if if you're not pulling it back all the way, mm. um, and and grabbing the gear, if you're doing it differently than that, even even if the field malfunctions, apparently, that you know, I, I don't fully get it, guys. I mean, the robots can only be so tall. I don't see how they can become in contact. I mean, maybe if something breaks and flies off, but then again, isn't somebody's head willing to be cut off if that happens in two? <laughs> Yeah, yep. So I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, I get the safety thing, and first always says safety is part of their, their things in it, but when you have, you know, in Hub City, both alliances had yellow cards coming into the finals, and it, it's like, what it what if an event would have been lost because the team just got another yellow for uh, accidental excursion their hand going outside? It's like, come on. I mean, those pilots had more than enough stress to go through, <laughs> and we, we should have, I mean, there should be three pilots in there first off, uh, and they had more than enough stress to, to try to, Make them think about every little, you know, pity rule in regards to something like this, but I don't know. Um, actually, I just want to get just real quick thoughts from you guys from from week one events. Anything in particular you guys uh, want to just kind of talk about? Uh, and Christine, you can jump in on this too if you want. Um, is there anything just kind of like a, a an overall uh, view of week one as we move into the future weeks that you guys want to discuss? Uh, <clears throat> I'll say very briefly that I'm just blown away by uh, how a few teams are scoring fuel in matches where nobody's scoring fuel, I find them just very, very boring to watch. Yeah. <laughs> um, I know that there's not much first can do at this point to encourage teams to score fuel, but I just can't believe that this is the game that first imagined they would be seeing, especially with the amount of fuel on the field. I think they had to believe that more teams were going to be shooting fuel. Fuel has become a better defensive barrier now than what it has become yeah. a defensive scoring mechanism. Yeah, Mike, any yeah. thoughts from you? I mean, we we talked about how this game would be changing, so I'm I'm hopeful and I'm hoping that this game changes, especially with the amount of ties and uh, when we get to that big stage and and um and two champs, you know, where this is the fuel is going to be where it separates it. So I'm excited to get to that point, and I ho hopefully this is just like the beginning, but. Um, I don't I don't know if we'll see any change until maybe weeks like five and six, honestly, you know, just because teams are going to be competing for their first time. And some teams have designed their robots to never score fuel, which is fine. Like that's their strategy they're, they're going for. But like you said, Justin, I think when it's just, you know, it, it could be very, very boring sometimes. Um, and then the other thing, I don't know. I don't think we're talking about it later and we don't have to get into it now. But just the fact that some, you know, some teams were. um you know, had matches taken away from them this weekend. And um, I understand why, but I don't think it's right, you know, but that's what I feel. Chrissy, any thoughts for you about week one? Um, I mean, we were lucky enough to be at an event where the field was pretty much ready to go and there weren't major setbacks. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, moving into these next weeks that all the fields get the parts that they need. Um, we definitely noticed some like slight inconsistencies on the field because 
there are so many little details like the um retro reflective tape on the boilers wasn't straight on one of the boilers on our field and oh, you got it you actually got retro reflective tape shipped to your event yeah so we were... <laughs> all right well that's a positive there um but i mean there were just little things like that um I don't know. I'm hoping that, you know, for the FTA's sake and everybody else's sake, things come together. And I think they will. Um, on the fuel note, I mean, we were lucky enough that that's basically what we designed our robot around. So I'm excited to see how, you know, our strategies evolve as the game goes on. I'm guessing in New England, there's definitely going to be a ton more defense, especially for alliances that know they can't get that fourth rotor. Um, we're going to see that defense way more. We didn't see a whole lot of defense mm -hmm. in South Florida until maybe the semifinals, but oh. we'll definitely see it when we start competing in New England, I believe. So one thing I want to talk a, a little bit about was field inconsistencies uh, between that. And like a, a couple of, I know I saw a, a really good thread on Chief Delphi in regards to uh, the boiler processing too much fuel than what was actually shot. So like somebody actually took uh, one of uh, Miss Carr's autonomous modes where they scored uh, like 42 KPA in auto and they only shot 36 balls. So how do you score 42 KPA when you only shoot 36 balls that way? And it seems like that's been something in a couple different areas. So uh, I really would like to see first find a way to get that ball counting done correctly. Uh, I'm sure teams are happy that they're, they're getting more than what they should in that instance. But overall viewpoint, I mean, you got to get exactly what you score. And I don't, I don't know what the method is for that. You know, if maybe you have it, come out of a different port or something like that, or, or try to unclog um, or do something if they're using photo gates or whatever they're using for uh, counting the fuel, but that definitely needs to be resolved. Uh, and, and the other thing, obviously we just talked about, you know, the new update about reaching out. Uh, it is what it is. You know, people are going to have to adapt to that. Uh, so I'm really just looking forward to this happens every year. First off, I mean, everybody whines and complains about there's issues and, and, and that sort of thing. And, it sucks, I know, because for many of you, you just paid $5,000 to go to an event that had a lot of issues, but I, it, it comes down to either first needs to be testing this stuff way more ahead of time, uh, either release the game ahead of time or something like that, or that's just going to be a reality of week one events is that we're going to have issues. Um, it, it sucks, but it's just a reality with that. And I, why I personally I don't prefer to go to week one events is because of something like that. Yeah, we definitely... Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, you go. Um, I mean, I would definitely agree. We we definitely lucked out in South Florida, but um, I will say, like, I know of headquarters staff that were literally like driving things down to events in New England. So they're, I mean, they're working around the clock at oh, this yeah. point to make sure things are happening. And it's such a small crew over there, and you know, a lot of them volunteer and mentor. So I at least want to, you know, thank them for the extra work that they're putting in to make sure oh, yeah. that you know our complaints are being heard. They're being dealt with at least. But I definitely agree. They definitely need more time to, you know build the field, test it out, make sure that they can make enough of them to ship out that are at the quality they need to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think uh, just to kind of wrap up, I think a big thing this year too, is the field assembly itself. Like, I mean, PNW, one of theirs, they started, I mean, they were hours upon hours late just because there's something wrong with the field that they couldn't get assembled correctly. Um, so I, I get that they're bringing in Disney. I, you know, I like the imagination aspect of it, but Maybe we need to be bringing in more people who have a grounded feeling on the GDC to say, hey, you know, this might not be possible. And I feel really bad for the first support staff that have to deal with all these complaints and issues because they're a very small staff that now has all these problems given to them with the game that they have and just trying to get that figured out. So I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to blame first or anything like that at all. It's just, it's a, it's a group issue that just needs to, it, it's not going to be resolved overnight, but we just need to start thinking about what we can do to, to hopefully improve that process over the years. Yeah, yeah, but I don't know if it's like a Disney problem, though. You know, like I think you can have now that you're saying it was, don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you're saying it's just another fat, another level of it, right? So I, you could still have them involved and still do this big production, oh, sure. but have like a simple, simpler game or less, you know, field elements involved. Or, you know, I, I just feel like you need to have more uh, experienced firsters on the GDC panel or some sort of review board or something like that. That is, that is quality, yeah, yeah. not quality checking, but just like practicality checking some of these. Yep. Hey, Christine, can we get an update on your drawing there? Can we take a look? Yeah, I, I'm like debating if I'm done or not because there's a lot of white on the robot, so I don't necessarily need to do too much more coloring. But oh, Nick, take a look yeah, there, yeah, Nick. Yeah. Little transition over there. It's where we nice. are. Right? Were you, were you using yeah. uh? Was it only colored pencil? Were you using some uh, watercolors there? So these are watercolor pencils, which I discovered oh, cool. in first year of teaching actually. Um, so it's two and one, and they are really fun. 
Awesome. It's portable, so. Nice. We'll keep we'll keep moving on that. If you got anything else, uh, we'll take a look at it. Uh, so we'll keep moving on. So before we get to the FRC Top 25, which is coming up right around the corner, uh, we do want to thank uh, everybody who's uh, subscribed and following so far. Thank you so much uh, for being part of the channel. Uh, if you subscribe, by the way, we'll try to get your names. Uh, uh, there's some weird glitch going on right now where uh, it's only stating one person's name as our only subscriber over and over again. Uh, so Nips from 2056, apparently you're our 56 subscribers that we have right now. So thank you very much. Uh, but thank you to everybody uh, who's following us. Uh, you can subscribe for free through Twitch uh, Prime. Uh, if you want to, if you have Amazon Prime, just link your account to Twitch. Or for a few bucks a month, you can help support us free emotes. Uh, we do have a Discord channel that everybody's invited to, but we do have a sub-only area as well. So thank you very much for your support. Uh, so coming up, FRC Top 25, as we get ready to transition for that, uh, let's take a look. Uh, Mike, we do have a video coming up, don't we, from one of our friends? We do. Um, so <clears throat> before we get to the FRC Top 25, our friend Jordan Grant, who's an alumni of FRC 610, um, has started a cool web series called Questions with First Robotics Kids. So let's take a look at our video. All right. All right, oh here we go. Uh, what's heavier, a pound of aluminum or a pound of cotton? Oh, come on. Pound of aluminum. No. Cotton? Sure, they're why not? Both, they're, they're both, they're both pound. the pound. Oh, oh, yes. yes. oh my god. Okay, I see why you said three questions. We're here with the legendary Mikey B. Is that your name? No. <laughs> okay, we're going to ask him some trick questions to see how smart first students really are. First question is what's heavier, a pound of aluminum or a pound of feathers? They're both a pound, the same weight, aren't they? Calvin. Pound of aluminum or a pound of feathers? Alu they're all the same. <laughs> <laughs> you sure? Yes. Almost got. Aluminum. Wait, no. Are they the same? I'm gonna say they're the same. They're both a pound. I don't know. Um, they're both a pound. Okay. Alyssa. Okay. They're, oh yeah, they're both a pound. So then I, I agree with that. Then they're both a pound. First question. Oh dear, what did I sign up for? <laughs> Same weight. Second question. Uh, there are six robots on the field. All but two die. How many are left? Two? Yeah? No? Wait, three. No. <laughs> two. 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 All but two die. All but two die. Two. <laughs> yes. Two. Still six, except two are not moving anymore. <laughs> okay. I'd be inclined to say four, but I feel like there's a... I'll just say four. I'm going to say four, too, because I'm... I don't know. Okay, you're just copying. Yep. Now. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Your robot comes in 12th place after quals. Spell 12. T W E 7 V E L E. This is silent 7 and 12. What? <laughs> <laughs> Spell 12th. T W E L V T W E L V T H. One, two, T H. No, um, T W E L uh, 12th. T H twelfth. That would be it. Eh. Thank God for autocorrect, I guess. T W E L T H T W E T H E L T H. That's right. So I don't know why I need to spell it. Signing off. <laughs>
um, on recap before the full uh, episode releases. So make sure you look up Jordan Grant on YouTube um, or I don't know if this is Twitter um, at Jordan Grant 2012. Uh, I know it's his Facebook. Out. I don't know if it's Twitter or not, but you can look yeah. it up. He's got a fan page on Facebook. But yeah, this yeah, first yeah. episode's already been released and it's been released for a couple of days. But in the future, uh, he's creating them. So we're going to uh, show it kind of a truncated version on recap and then the full episode will be available on his YouTube page. Cool. So it looks like we dropped our sound there for a sec, but um, <clears throat> I think yeah. we're good. Just what, yeah, just what Tyler said. So it would be really cool. Uh, you might recognize him. He sang, was it Champs last year? He did his, uh, he did his thing last year. I don't recall. Oh, yeah, you weren't there, Tyler. You ditched. <laughs> oh, did I? Yeah, I went to the Budweiser tour, yeah. <laughs> That's right, you weren't there. <laughs> Moving on. All right, so we're going to get into the FRC Top 25 Week 1 of our, the 2017 um, season. I think this is, is this year six, Justin? I don't know. Yeah. Year um, six. 12, 13, 16, 17. This is seven. Seventh year of doing this. This is crazy. So Justin and I started the FRC Top 25. For those of you that don't know, um, Justin and I started the FRC Top 25 um, seven years ago. Years. Yeah. Wow. Um, just because we wanted a <clears throat> kind of a way just to identify the top 25 teams on a weekly basis um, throughout uh, the competition season. So it for has fun. To, uh, what's that for fun, for fun. Yes. For fun. That was always and now look at our, wait, group. what do you, but, what do you uh, mean when you say that? Yeah. <laughs> um, so our, <clears throat> so back then we just, it was more of a way to, for everybody, for friends and fans of first to get together on a weekly basis, just to talk robots. Uh, and we did, um, the poll, um, top 25, we started out by just manually entering everything and it's, um, involved into, uh, Google doc sheets and everything. And, um, kind of you know voting <clears throat> once a team was once a team played they could be voted for every week and then we, it's changed to just voting for teams that compete that week and it's kind of all to has taken shapes and um, different versions of our show and um, as of two years ago um, we've kind of joined forces with Tyler here on uh, first updates now and the FRC top 25 is now kind of a sub show sort of speak or a sub segment of first updates now so it's uh, it's its own show still pretty much <laughs> kind of yeah so we're just very very excited um just and i couldn't be um, happy to work with uh nick and tyler um you know and everybody else that we have gotten a chance and just to really see how first updates now has grown uh over these past couple of years so Absolutely. Um, we're excited to be here so that's kind of a little um a little background into what the frc top 25 is and we always say at the start of every year and pretty much the start of every show that this is absolutely for fun um this means nothing um it's just kind of a way to give you guys a chance to just say, Hey, this team's really good. And, um, you know, you can vote. And, um, so that's kind of it. And it's, um, it's been a lot of fun and, um, it's really, um, opened up a lot of opportunities for Justin All right, guys, and now, and, uh, disregard and everything's Mike said and know that this is the end all be all poll in first. And we are the ultimate authority. <laughs> that's it. Yes. That's, yep. authority. that's what I want that's you to take away from this. Yeah. The thing, well, the thing I've taken away from it is just the <laughs> chance to be able to meet all of you guys and just share um, some just some time with you on a weekly basis and get to know you at champs and see you at competitions and stuff and just really get to know you and uh, make first, um, while it's a small but big community, just kind of make it a little bit smaller um, and just really. Uh, you're going to say great again. So, what? And, I didn't say great. And we get, make first great again. <laughs> and we get VIP passes at championship. So it all works out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it does all work out. Awesome. <clears throat> so, so that being said, we're going to kind of go through 25 through 11 on the quicker side of things. Um, and then spend a little bit more time um, to 10 through one. Uh, we know it's getting later in the show, so we're just going to keep it moving anyway. Um, and again, this is, um, <laughs> Never mind. Okay, so starting off, um, our team our twenty fifth ranked team is going to go to um, team twenty four sixty eight. Team How do you say that? I said twenty four sixty eight. Two four six eight. Two four six eight. I, know. I did it just. To I'm going to get hate team. mailed you now. Thank you. Twenty four sixty eight. I think the yeah the first time Justin and I ever saw that team and their name were like that had you know we were at the thing. Do you have do you name your team that because you have to or. <laughs> Anyways, so they're from Austin, Texas, and Eanes, Ean, right? Sure. Eanes Independent School District and Westlake High School. It's team appreciate. They have an overall record of seven and seven, and they were quarterfinalists at the Hub City Regional. So with a bold move, Team Appreciate is playing in weeks one and two. So they have very little time um, after build season one to get their robot ready or their practice robot or practice or whatever it may be, um, as well as to kind of refine that robot by week two. 
So Tim Appreciate has really made their mark in the Texan robot hierarchy as these past um, couple of years. Always one of those teams that we talk about when we talk about Texas. Um, so we're sure they'll be able to improve on their outing in the quarterfinals last week at Hub City and again this week at Dallas. They'll yeah, also they, be competing at the Silicon Valley Regional as well. I was going to say, they kind of fell into the uh, trap of after everybody else declined the number one seed, they were ranked 17th and didn't really have a choice. There you go. Well, that's all right. That is say yes. <laughs> all right. Our 24th ranked team is team 49-39. Um, so they're from Brampton, Ontario, Canada. Central Peel Secondary School. It's all Spark 9. With a 12-7-1 and one overall record, they were the winners at the Durham College District event. Um, so they took the prestigious first win in the Ontario district. Um, All Spark 9 has much to be proud of. They ranked 18th, but were selected second overall um, and took home that win uh, with their alliance. Um, they compete again at the Victoria Park and the McMaster University events. So that's All Spark 9. We saw them in that video by Jordan. Yeah. Yeah. Moving on. 20, uh, in the 23rd spot, we have team 5172 from Greenbush, Minnesota, Greenbush Middle River Senior High School. It's the Gators with an overall record of 7, 5, and 0. Oh, they were the semifinals at the Northern Lights Regional. Um, the Gators have found their way to the top 25 over the past year or two um, pretty consistently. Um, and this year so far is no different. Uh, they ranked 12th at the half mega regional in Duluth um, and made it to the semifinals um, as the A seed. Um, we're excited to see more out of them this year when they compete again um, at the second super double regional in Minnesota when they compete at the 10,000 Lakes regional. Yeah, I definitely see them uh, improving a bit over it. They kind of had a disappointing start uh, with their matches, and I can definitely see them starting to uh, improve a bit more as they go through through their next event. I mean, they were absolutely phenomenal team last year. And I don't think that was a fluke. I think we're going to see more of the Gators and start to see them rise to the top. Mm -hmm. All right. Moving on to 20, uh, the 22nd spot is Team 1876. They're from Hilton Head Island, South Carolina, and Hilton Head Island High School. It's Beach Botics with an overall record of 9-2-1. and one. They were semifinalists at the Palmetto Regional in Myrtle Beach. Um, I know probably personally all of us that live up here in the north, uh, we could go for a little beach in our lives right now. Um, but Beach Botics brought it this past weekend, taking the number one scene at the Palmetto Regional. They selected 3-29 and 34-89. Um, they fell short in two matches in the semifinals, but they compete again in week four to try to go for some of that gold. So I think this is the first time Beach Botics has made it to the top 25. Um, we should have an archive somewhere. Um, but congratulations to them, as I believe their first time. I say Beach Bots have been on top 25 oh, 25. Sure. So I don't know about Beach, Beach Botics, Botics, though. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. From 22 to 21, we'll talk about 233, the pink team. Uh, from Rock. Oh, this is one of Justin's favorites. I don't know if he's got that energy. <laughs> no, dude. I, you can't take it. <laughs> <laughs> you know Justin's not feeling well if he won't say this one. From Rockledge, uh, Florida, Rockledge, Coca Beach, Vieira, and Space Coast High Schools, it's the pink team. 7-5 and five overall, and they were quarterfinalists at the South Florida event. I'm no Justin, but it's pretty close. That was pretty um, good. <laughs> so we've only, how many times do you think we've said that team over the past seven years? Uh, uh, they're uh, always on the top 25. Always, yeah, it's hundreds <clears throat> at this point. Uh, so 233, who was iffy and even having a team this year, came out pretty strong early on this, um, or this, or this competition season. They have an efficient gear mechanism and a fast climb. 233 paired up with 179 and 4592, uh, but the chemistry and firepower wasn't there, and they were eliminated in the quarterfinals. And won't have I, long to lick their wounds as they'll be back at it this weekend in Orlando. I, I cannot believe they got eliminated in the quarterfinals. That absolutely blew me away. I don't, uh, Christina, can you talk about anything about uh, the pink team? Yeah, it was awesome to see them there again. Um, they definitely picked up a lot of momentum and had a pretty good alliance. They were one of the few shooting robots there consistently, like not super fast, but consistently getting fuel into the boiler, which definitely edged them out in a lot of their events or a lot of their uh, matches. Awesome. Yeah. From one well-known team to the next, our 20th ranked team is team 67 from Highland Charter Township, Michigan. That's definitely different than it used to be. Huron Valley Schools. <laughs> Uh, for Huron Valley Schools, it's the hot team. 67 was 9, 5, and 2 overall, um, and they were quarterfinals at the Southfield District event. Um, so Hall of Fame Team 67 brought their hot bot to the field this past weekend in Southfield. Southfield? I don't know if you're there. Uh, they were able to achieve a record of 7, 3, and 2, and they um, and they seeded 8th. They were eventually selected to join the number 4 alliance with 548 and 1188. 
Um, we were uh, really interested to see how 67 would do after uh, one of the lead mentors moved. Um, I think they're now working at IFI, um, but it looks like another great robot from 67 this year. I think that was a couple of years ago, actually. Are you oh, talking about Adam? Are you talking about Adam yeah, Freeman? Freeman? Yeah, yeah Freeman. Yeah, Freeman. Ago, you're right. Yeah, left a couple of years ago. But yeah, I mean, absolutely still phenomenal performances by 67. I'm sure they're, you know, a little disappointed uh, that they got knocked out in the semis uh, just based on their previous performances. But um, I really thought out of any of the alliances who are going to give 33 and 29 60 a run for their money, it was going to be 67 with uh, 540, uh, 548 and 1188. And they put up a, a really good, uh, I mean, that second match was determined by one point, And it was from uh, 2960 on the number one alliance climbing with three seconds left. It could be a different story uh, if we would have saw a third match. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So from one Hall of Fame team to the next team in 19th place, we have team 27 from Clarkston, Michigan, Clarkston uh, High School. It's team Rush. 27 was eight and seven overall, and they were finals at the North Star Regional this past weekend. Um, so 27 decided uh, to begin their season outside of FIM and competed at Northern Lights. They struggled a little bit in qual seating for 34th. However, uh, good scouting revealed 27 had the ability to play better than their record indicated. Um, and they were able to help the number four alliance to reach the finals. Um, they'll be moving um, into district play in a couple of weeks. Over yeah. FIM. And 27's played at uh, Northern Lights Regional a few times now. Uh, especially when before they got their uh, championship chairman's award. So it's good to see them back in Duluth. Uh, I'm sure a lot of friendly faces out there uh, that were great, very happy to see Kyle and 27 back uh, up in Duluth. Mm. Our, what's that, Tyler? Were you going to say something? Nope, go ahead. I heard it. A... <laughs> All right, in 18th, we have uh, team number 386 from Melbourne, Florida. Melbourne Senior High School is its team voltage. They are 13-5 and five overall. And they were the winners of the South Florida Regional. So 386 got their season um, off the most perfect of starts last weekend, winning the South Florida Regional. They played well and, and caught the eye of the number four alliance. Um, and they were able to help them get the win. They'll, they'll look to make it back, uh, make it back to back wins in back to back weeks as they compete again this weekend in Orlando. So good luck to Team Voltage. Moving down to 17th, we have 3130 from St. Paul, Minnesota, Eastridge High School. It's the Errors. They are 12 and 3 overall and were the winners of the North Star Regional. Uh, mostly, mostly static gear me- uh, mechanism with a little active release assistance helped them to be truly effective. They were able uh, to rank sixth and join the number two alliance at the North Star Regional. Uh, they, were helped, they were able to help lead their alliance to the finals where they took down the number four alliance for the win. Um, congrats to them. And you can follow their season as uh, they move over to Wisconsin in a few weeks. Yeah, and 3130, you know, a common trend here. We're, we're starting to see more Minnesota teams get on this top 25 list. And I think there's still at least one more or two more to come. Uh, and Minnesota's coming up. You know, they've, they've been a, a state for a long time that nobody knew. You know, they had 200 teams yeah. and nobody really knew who any of them were. Maybe the exception of Nightcrawler uh, coming in. And it, it's it, we're starting to see... Great teams coming out of Minnesota, uh, starting to do better at championships well t- as well, too. So I look forward to seeing how Minnesota teams are going to start doing uh, as we start moving forward. Nice. All right. Moving on, we have in our 16th spot, we have Team 2512 from Duluth, Minnesota, and East Senior High School. It's the Duluth East Daredevils. Uh, they are 10-5 and five overall, and we're a finalist at the North Star Regional. Um, so 25-12 we think just cleaned up North star. So they had a first uh, Dean's list finalist award, Olivia Nelson, they were original finalists, they had team spirit award, and then they were able to get a wild card out of that. So nice. uh, good start for the, um, the daredevils. They have a, you know, only they already got that spot for championships. And now it's just refining their robot um, and getting things, uh, you know, fine tuned and uh, just have fun the rest of the season. When you kind of get that monkey off your back of like qualifying, um, it's like really nice. So, well, you know, especially last year, and when when I was on twenty twenty six, they were alliance partners with us uh, in the twenty fifteen finals at World Championships, and, and world finalists in both us and them did not qualify for World Champs last year. Uh, so, huge, huge congrats to twenty five twelve for again their ticket punch once again. Yeah, for sure. All right, we are on. Where are we on? Fifteen. Fifteen. <clears throat> Look, there we are. In 15th place, we have team 3847 from Houston, Texas. Oh, oh no. St. Agnes Academy. Thank you. 
It's St. Agnes Academy and straight Jesuit <laughs> Jesuit College, College Prep. Prep School. Thanks, buddy. Twelve is six and one overall. When the final was the Hub City Regional. That's all he's got. <laughs> Tyler, so Tyler talked earlier about Hub City, and for just a, a quick recap, Spectrum uh, teamed up with 1477 and 159, uh, and were able to take out some really good alliances on their way to the finals. Congrats to them on a great event where they also picked up the Regional Engineering Inspiration Award. So I, I want to talk about Spectrum for a second because it was very interesting uh, through the semis and the finals that – they had 1477 had Spectrum playing defense a lot of times. And I thought this was a very odd strategy uh, because 159 was their, their pick around back. Uh, Spectrum had a couple issues with their, uh, with their gear pickup uh, off the floor. And I think that kind of made them more better suited because 159 was able to shuttle a little bit better. But just an interesting strategy. And I'm really curious to see because Spectrum can do more than just defense. So I'm curious as they move on to their next event, how they're going to start improving their mechanisms uh, so they can kind of take the leadership role in the alliance. Awesome. All right. Moving on to team number uh, in our 14th spot. Uh, Justin, who we got up? I'll take this one. 45. Oh, Tyler's 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 going to talk about this. That's right. I'm stepping in for Justin. So uh, 4525 from St. Thomas, Ontario, Canada. That's Renaissance Robotics. 12-5-0 record. And they were semi-finalists at the Ontario District Durham College event. Uh, so 4525, uh, able to get a nice climbing with the, with the gear delivery mechanism. Uh, and it's one of those things where, you know, they paired up uh, 4525, pairing up with uh, 4914, 2609, uh, losing to the 772, 2200, 6323 alliance, which that's the, alli- that's the alliance who won, isn't it? 772, or they, were they finalists? I don't remember. Uh, they were finalists. Yeah, I think they're they're fine. Yeah, finalists they there. They won the, I think, the chairman's award. Yes, yes, thank you. I know they had one of the, uh, one of the medals there. But yeah, going down to them in semifinals, uh, they have you know a couple other events uh, coming up later in the season. So their next one, actually, only one other event. They're going to be competing at the uh, Waterloo event. So that's a really tough event. We all know that. Uh, so hopefully they can make a good fit for uh, how their uh, robots going to fit into uh, Waterloo because if you have a lot of robots at Waterloo, they're going to be potentially shooting fuel. A good gear shuttle or robot could pay off quite well, especially in a uh, late first or second round pick. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, moving on to our 13th ranked team is team number 1058 from Londonderry, New Hampshire. Londonderry uh, Senior High School. It's the PVC Pirates with an overall record of 13, 5, and 1. They were winners at the Granite State District event this past weekend. Uh, so they were selected first overall uh, by 5687 uh, after they had ranked, uh, where is it? It's right here. They ranked fourth. Uh, they were selected first overall. Um, and with the addition of 4908, they made it to the finals after two quarterfinal matches, a tie in semifinal match number one, and then uh, two wins after that. And they took the rubber match uh, in finals match number three with a nice score of 40, 445. So scores in their playoffs, I thought, were pretty impressive. It was 395, 435, a little low one at 205, but then 445, 420, 395, and 445. So a uh, very nice job uh, by the PVC Pirates. Moving from 13 to 12, we have 2052 from St. Paul, Minnesota, Irondale Senior High School. Um, this is Nightcrawler, right? 2052 is Nightcrawler, yep. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Mind blank. Uh, Nightcrawler, with an overall record of 12 and 4, they were winners of the Lake Superior Regional. So Nightcrawler started off the 2017 Steamworks season with their appearance at the Lake Superior Regional, where they were selected first overall by the number one uh, seed, 4539. Um Nightcrawler was fourth, uh, and with the help of 93, took the win in eight matches. Congrats to them, as well uh, as Nate uh, Simiel, uh, who won the Woody Flowers Finals Award. And I also believe that they did; they had a, um, a Dean's List Finalist as well. Yep. Emily Davis, uh, first Dean's List Finalist Awards, and they won the Gracious Professionalism Award. So four awards. They cleaned up for, there, too. Yeah, they cleaned up there. Uh, yeah, 2052, we talked about them a lot. It, it's kind of being one of those uh, few Minnesota teams that's been very consistent year over year. And this year is no doubt for them as well, too. Um, absolutely phenomenal robot. 
Uh, I didn't get to see the last finals match because there was some weird delay. I think they had the delay for like an hour or two or something due to FMS issues oh, uh, for the third final for the third finals match. But I was absolutely ecstatic to hear uh, that they won. Like I said, is it is it alma mater? How do you pronounce that? My the team that yeah, I was in on was high it. school alma mater. Yeah, I must have mispronounced it the first time. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I'm Dude, from Team 93. Burned. Yeah, <laughs> it happens. I get burned by Justin. No, I'm uh, we so. all do. <laughs> so I was on 293 in high school. Uh, I don't think they've won an event since like 2007 or something like that. Or 2008, I think, was might have been the last event. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Uh, but it's just great to see them win again, get back into the uh, uh, world championships. Uh, so very happy uh, for Team 93 and seeing them get back into the championships once again. Uh, 2052, <laughs> I, like I said, it, it's interesting to not see them use Mechanum in a year that you could use Mechanum again. They've been known for being a Mechanum robot. Uh, so I think as a team, they're starting to evolve a little bit, not hating on McCann too much, but, eh, you know, you could do something <laughs> different. And they chose they chose to do something different, and it's starting to pay dividends for them. Uh, their team has really come together, and that's a team that you could really look to see have a deep run in the championships. Well, what? All right, moving on to the number, uh, the, the 11th ranked team, we have team 3366 from Roscoe, Texas. Roscoe Collegiate High School is the Plowbots. With an overall record of 11 and 3, they were quarterfinalists at the Hub City event. So, like I said, we have this Slack channel that goes on. So, at one point, I don't even know who wrote it. Maybe it was Nick or something. Said, guys, the Plowbots are uh, leading Hub City. And there was a collective, the like, yeah. who? There was a collective, like, who? Who are you talking about? Um, which I think is awesome. To, um, and this is what we kind of said before. This is also another reason why we love this show and why we love doing the top 25 because teams that are nobodies, teams that have never heard of before have a chance to be recognized, have a chance to um, just kind of start getting that name recognition. We've seen that um, in the past with so many teams. Um, so I think this was great. Whether you think they deserve to be there or not, um, they were up there, and that's something to be said. You know, leading the field amongst teams like 118, uh, 2468, 624, um, and so many others. Um, just really happy for the Plowbots um, to be to be ranked here at 11th. So that's great for them. And I think again, this is what we love about doing this show is teams that I've never heard of before. Um, you know, we can look back and say, yeah, Plowbots. You know, they were number one seed there. So, so um, I, I just want to jump in, by the way. Uh, so somebody mentioned that they lost to the AC and got crushed. They lost in three matches. So I don't think they necessarily got crushed for something like that. But, uh, you know, in this thing, obviously, Texas is going to represent pretty strong in this. Uh, we encourage you to vote uh, for who you feel. And if you didn't vote, then I mean, you really don't have a say in how this turns out. Uh, we had And we had about like 130 votes or something like that. So it's it's one of those things where... Uh, as a team, did they get maybe a little bit carried? Sure, that's okay, but they're still good enough to be the number one seed uh, and still good enough to be number 11 on the top 25. And uh, I'll give them my congrats uh, for doing that and welcome into the top 25 for the Plowbots. Uh, I agree. Uh, we didn't really, nobody really knew who this team was. Uh, and we were definitely watching them uh, throughout the event. Uh, but I'll give them my congrats for taking them number 11 in the week one FRC top 25. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah, good yeah. for them. All right, so that's it. So we're going to enter in the top 10. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about each one of these teams, but we'll still keep it moving. Uh, thanks for hanging with us, and that's awesome. Like um, Tyler just said, there's uh, how many voters we had this week. Um, it's great. I just hope, you know, we've statistically over the years, like just see that we go down a little bit in votes um, after the first couple of weeks. So we just encourage you guys to keep voting. You know, make, you know, take 10 minutes, just do a little bit of research and, and just keep voting and encourage others on your team and those in your area and districts to vote as well. Um, hey, can I jump in with one other thing? Uh, somebody mentioned oh, yeah. about the uh, expert poll, uh, and I just want to talk a little bit about that because we did that last year. Uh, for this year, we're going to do the expert poll for championships or for like the final FRC top 25, uh, but really it just came down to, it, you know, we had well, like 15 people in the expert poll last year. It is just way too much for us to try to organize uh, with so many events going on. There's no way we can get a full representative sample uh, unless we have like 100 experts. And when we get 150 votes, that doesn't really make sense, right? Uh, so we're going to do, we'll do the expert poll and do composite rankings. And this is not set in stone, by the way. So please don't, you know, take take that as it is. Uh, but the, the plan is to do expert poll for the final FRC top 25, where we can get kind of more representative sample of all the teams in FRC. Yeah. Tyler, there's a question in the chat about how do you vote? Might be a good idea to cover that. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So for voting in the polls, uh, we post on Chief Delphi, we post on our Facebook page, we post on Twitter, 
uh, as well as our website, firstupdatesnow.com. Polls open uh, Sunday evenings. We want to make sure that all teams have enough time to play. Uh, but Sunday evenings when polls open, they typically close at, at about 8 p.m. Eastern on Monday. Uh, that's literally as late as we can go, guys, because we're struggling to, to, to write stuff up uh, last minute. So that's a very quick turnaround for us to try to get all this information out and all the graphics out for this. Uh, but yeah, you can go to our go to our website, Chief Delphi, uh, Facebook. Just search for us updates now, and we'll get you the stuff uh, that you need for that. All right, cool. Yeah. So moving on into the top ten, our first team there is Team Twelve Eighty Five from Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. Rick Hansen Secondary School. It's the Big Bang. Uh, with an overall record of sixteen and four, they were the winners uh, at the Durham College event. They were some. They were finalists, weren't they? I'm I'll look it up. Keep going. Well, it kind of might depend on what I say. <laughs> might depend. What do you, no, they were the winners of the Durham College. <laughs> oh, that's a, okay. No, it's, I messed you up before because I had 772 or whatever. I thought one. And I think I missed you up. Uh, yeah, they okay. beat 772. 772. <laughs> All right. So and said that, I said this before, and I truly believe it. I don't know if anybody else feels the same way, but I just think this is a monument, like I said before, a monumental <clears throat> point for Ontario Robotics. Such a strong program they have up there. I just think there's something to be said as like, hey, we were we won the first district event in Ontario, you know, when they switched to districts. Um, so I think last year, maybe a little bit, they were overshadowed by their kind of big sister team, um, 1241. Uh, we oogled an odd over over their robot kind of all season. So I think 1285 kind of had a chip on their shoulder, kind of make themselves known um, in that shadow a little bit. So um, they placed second overall. They went 10 and 2. Um, I don't know if they were declined or not, uh, but they did captain the second alliance with 49-39 and 49-46. I'm taking down the seven and three alliances on the way to the finals. They played the four alliance um, and and had matches uh, two and three with scores of 277 and 262. Um, So, again, uh, I'm just really proud of them. I think they did a great job. Uh, especially in all the hype of uh, their sister team there. So we'll you see get a high five, five from Mike. <laughs> That's it. There you go. By the, by the way, I don't believe there were any declines at the Ontario event. Yeah, I wasn't sure. So yep, they're, yeah, they're somebody in chat the, just confirmed too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the uh, we'll see me at Georgian College and the Windsor Essex Great Lakes District event. It's so like <laughs> habit to say regional there. The Windsor right. Essex Great Lakes Regional. So. Uh, <clears throat> And, and side note, their sister team, 1241, will be playing next week at Ryerson. All right. Along with Mike, what I should have done is gone back into the Top 25 archives and find video clips of me saying these teams. We could have just played it. <laughs> we could have super <laughs> I know, right? Because <laughs> this next one is also one of my favorites to say. Uh, it is, too. Yeah. Um, right. side, by the way, too, if you do want to see the archives, all the archives, at least I think back through 2013, are on our website, too. So you can look back at who was in the polls from previous years. There it is. So our number nine team is team 359 from Waialu, Hawaii. Waialu High School, it's the Hawaiian kids. An overall record of 11-4-1. They were the winners at the uh, Palmetto Regional. So as we talk about every year, the Hawaiian kids are not afraid to travel to compete. They covered the span, not the entire span of the Pacific Ocean, obviously, but just from Hawaii to California, to the West Coast. And then they flew all the way across the country to the East Coast to play in Myrtle Beach at the Palmetto Regional. They finished 14th with a record of 5-3, and three, um, making the smart choice. The second team uh, seeded uh, team 38-24, the HBA were hot tech, selected 359. And that's why I said the smart choice is because, and we had mentioned earlier, doing good scouting, recognizing that sometimes ranking doesn't mean anything. Um, and they also added 13-19, that alliance headed to the playoffs. And then per... Uh, Glenn Lee, I'm not really sure why. Maybe you mentioned earlier, but the playoffs took over seven hours. Oh my God! The chat can help us is maybe to why as well. I'm not sure why. Uh, but they cruised. <laughs> they got through quarters and, and semis each in two matches. They were slightly ousted in finals match one, but fought back and took the next two uh, for the first regional win of the year. They all flew home in the returning stateside to compete again on the East Coast at the Pittsburgh Regional. <laughs> before they'll fly home again to compete at the Hawaii regional before they'll fly back and compete in St. Louis. That's just absolutely insane. So, you want to get, so <laughs> yeah. get nuts? Let's so, get nuts. So 359, by the way, I think Hawaii is slated to be at the uh, Houston regional, but they were oh, the flex. Oh, they were the flex. And, well, no, I think they're, they're competing in St. Louis. Uh, because I, I know 359 has a huge uh, Vex presence. And with Vex worlds going on, 
yeah. uh, the week of South Champs. Uh, I think that's probably the reason behind that, I would guess. Actually, let me see. Um, they are signed up for St. Louis. Yeah, they said that all of the semis had to be replayed, and some of the teams <laughs> were already packed up. Jesus. <laughs> Sounds like a story we should have heard. That's yeah, please type more in chat. We'd love to hear more about this. Talk that's about crazy. Soccer. Hawaii yeah. to Myrtle, to South Carolina to Hawaii to, yeah. to Pennsylvania to Hawaii. Well, they, I mean, they rotate Pennsylvania. their kids. It's not like they bring the same group of kids for every single event. Oh, uh, that's okay. But I mean, I, I mean, Glenn goes to every single event. <laughs> Dude, uh, Glenn, I, crazy. He's a crazy guy. Good, um, yeah, great, great guy. I love him. Good way though. Yeah, good way. Oh sure. <laughs> All right, moving on to eighth, we have team fifty six eighty seven from Portland. Maine Baxter Academy for Science and Technology. It's the Outliers with an overall record of 14, 4, and 1. They were the winners at the Granite State District event. So the Outliers are Outliers no more because I don't think they've been in the top 25 ever before. Mm. Um, they finished 8 and 3 overall with a 1.72 average ranking score thanks to their gear delivery and auto, fast gear cycles, and a quick hang at the end. The Outliers selected 4908 and 1058 to their alliance. Um, this Alliance had played eight matches in the playoffs and scored over 420 points in four of those times, so about half. Uh, so nice job to their team. Great robot and good luck later this season at the Greater Boston and the Pine Tree events. Yeah, I just want to talk about this team for a little bit because I wasn't paying too much attention to this event originally. And then I started hearing more and more about this little robot that could. <laughs> uh, and it, well, if you look at it, it's it, it's a very and not by bad means, but a very just simple, robust design that they have, and they are able to do gear shuttling very, very fast. And especially in early weeks, that's going to pay a lot of dividends for what they want to do. And I could really see them, at, you know, as they uh, start uh, doing a little bit better. Barry said they're competing in Greater Boston and Pine Tree. Uh, it will be interesting to see because once again, I, I still feel the meta for this game is you. You're going to need to be able to score that KPA, and we'll see how that works out. But there's already robots scoring 40 KPA by themselves. So 5687 here could be a fantastic first pick alliance partner if you just want a really good gear shuttler. And obviously, they're able to scoot around. I heard there wasn't a ton of defense at that event, but even so, I think they'll get used to that. And just really cool to see a robot that maybe in a team you maybe have never heard before crack in the top 10 of the FRC top 25. Very cool. All right. Uh, moving on to our 687, the people's champion, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> the people's champ. Yeah. I like that. <clears throat> All right. In the seventh, we have team number 125 from Boston, Massachusetts, uh, Boston, Latin, Brookline and Revere high schools. It's the neutrons. I hope I said that right. Christine with an overall record of 11 and seven, they were finalists at the South Florida regional. So after highlighting this team on the show last week, we're all very excited to see the Neutrons in action this past weekend at the South Florida Regional. They finished 19th overall, and with an exact 1.0 ranking score average, they were selected uh, third overall by 15-23, and then added 64 to their alliance from Brazil, who we talked about. They took quarterfinals and semifinals in two matches each, one finals match number one, but then lost the second match only by three points and just couldn't win the third. Close to a regional win for this district team, but have gained some great experience and access to their uh, modular robot. And we will uh, return uh, to the New England district event uh, next week to compete again. Um, I don't know if Christine still, is still with us, but anything you want to add about your team? I know we talked about them before. Any, we didn't, obviously, any trouble with the airport or uh, any <laughs> final thoughts kind of on, on your weekend in general? Yeah, so like I said before, we're looking at making a better, you know, more consistent stream, and the kids are really amped up about doing a floor gear pickup to kind of make that better on our robot. So it was definitely a bit of a struggle for us. It was the first time testing out our our gear placer on a real field, so they're looking to you know enhance that for Greater Boston District. Very cool. Uh, so real quick, Christine, since a lot there's probably a decent amount of people who didn't catch the uh, show last week with you on. What did you guys have to do for the uh, TSA? Like, what was the whole story behind that? Just give us a quick snapshot. Yeah, so right after Oliver and I finished up the show, we went downstairs and finished packing the robot. Um, we had the top part of our robot taken off. It's nice and modular. So the shooter and the hook for the feeder went into a nice pelican case where the base of the robot kind of got wrapped up and then we built an aluminum frame around it and attached a nice polite note, which you can find on our Facebook page, um, to the TSA. And the TSA actually called Brandon this year. We put his number on the TSA letter just to make sure that there weren't any batteries inside. And after that phone call, everything was good. And the robot, you know, got loaded on the plane and loaded off and everything was good. Very, very cool. 
That's awesome. This is, I'm, just, that. I'm just glad it, there was a note too that you guys wrote that I just want to mention that just said like, please don't think this is a bomb. We're a high school robotics team. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the uh, this may <clears throat> this probably looks suspicious in an X-ray machine, but we promise it's not. <laughs> All right, nice. We should do that in a uh, X-ray material next time. Send them a message. All, All right. right, top six here. <clears throat> an issue with my headphones. No, so another one of my favorites. <laughs> it is. All right. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm so distracted. Okay, our sixth ranked team is team number 624 from Katy, Texas. Cinco Ranch High School, it's Kryptonite. With an overall record of 9-8, and eight, they were semifinalists and chairman's winners at the Hub City Regional this past weekend. Um, so as we had mentioned before, we got to see some big names compete in uh, the FRC this past weekend, and Kryptonite was one of them. Um, competing in the dominant Texan field of robots, Kryptonite came out of the gate with uh, scoring a gear and auto, a fast cycling robot who can hang well at the end. They're a fast robot that can elude defense. Um, it's kind of hard to believe that 624 and 118 got to play each other, considering the rankings and what happened. Um, but the robots above them were Texas Torque, Spectrum, Team Appreciate. Um, and as we talked about, the number one seed, 3366. They had some good teams above them as well. Um, 624's Alliance took the quarterfinals to three matches, as well as semis, but could not make it out of the semifinals, losing to the number two Alliance. They'll play again next week in Kansas City before returning back to Texas at the end of the month. So good luck to Kryptonite. Yeah, and, and 624, you know, on their end, I, I thought they were holding it together really well, especially once 118, you know, they lost their gear intake mechanism or the ability to do it. They really they lost their ability to pretty much shoot after autonomous. 624 is what kept that alliance together and uh, what won semifinal one uh, for them. And it was unfortunate that, you know, 118 just couldn't get it going right because 624 and 118 together were looking really good. Just unfortunate circumstances that happened. Awesome. So moving into the top five, five left. In that fifth spot goes to team 179 from West Palm Beach, Florida, in that Grove and Sun Coast Community High Schools. Doesn't that just sound off? Inlet Grove and Sun Coast. Uh, it's the Children of the Swamp. With an Sounds overall a lot record warmer. Of- that does. An overall record of seven and five. They're, they were quarterfinals at the South Florida Regional. They finished fifth and were capped in the fifth alliance, playing selecting two thirty three the pink team and forty five ninety two to join their alliance. Playing the fourth alliance in the quarterfinals, they were just outgunned and could not beat them and were knocked out. Uh, the children of the swamp always find a way to get through difficult times um, and always put out great robots. So we'll be looking forward to kind of seeing them again at Rocket City in a couple of weeks. Moving into our fourth-ranked team is team number 2481, the Roboteers from Tremont, Illinois. Tremont High Schools, it's the defending world champions, the Roboteers. Playing down in Texas for their first official event since Einstein. <laughs> wow. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Not wow. My, 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 I was like, when was Einstein? Never mind. 2481 <laughs> is looking to see how the 2017 machine stacks up. Um, they received a fourth at Hub City. Uh, that's kind of where our notes end. Trust me. Yeah, no, I can talk about 2041 a little bit. So, you uh, you, you had a team that uh, in 2041, no uh, ground pickup at all. So, very interesting strategy by 2041. If you saw the reveal video, uh, they won the Premier Night reveal video, which is, of course, more important than World Championships. We focus on that. Uh, they have an absolutely incredible autonomous mode. If you watch the video, you can see that they uh, have these. Uh, uh, the sensors and cameras that like you use on cars uh, to navigate around the field in autonomous. It's absolutely incredible. And they started getting it down. I think we're going to see a lot better iterations as we move forward. Don't get me wrong. They seeded fourth. Uh, I think a big thing for them that they were a little bit disappointed in uh, was getting, not getting enough uh, KPA in autonomous. Uh, We did see a cool match with them in 118 uh, where they both were able to the fire uh, into the boiler together. And that was really cool. But look out for 2041. Uh, I'm curious to see, you know, and I know them very well, and I've been huge fans of 2041. I'm curious to see how the no uh, ground pickup will work out for them in the future. Uh, but a team like that, I think they're just going to be so efficient at shuttling. If you watch them play, uh, until they got their lines kind of got shut down a little bit, I mean, their sword drive was so intact. Excuse me. They were they literally just like a, a team would come to play a defense against them, and they would just loop right around them with their sword drive. It looked It looked very slick. Uh, and, and their team, I think they kind of fell off a little bit with their uh, second pick. Uh, it seemed like it, very unusual for them because I, I know their strategy and coach mentor for that. Uh, it seemed like they had a lot of issues figuring out who their last pick was going to be. And I don't think it worked out as well as that they were hoping to. But 2041, obviously a great robot. The community feels they have a great robot and starting to get a lot more recognition in the first community. So look out for them when you see them at Central Illinois in week three. 
Awesome. Thank you for that. I know 2041 is a special place in your heart, Tyler. It's very obvious. They do. They do, yes. <laughs> I, I love right. 2041. Oh, yeah, for sure. All right, moving on to number three. It's team number 1477 from the Woodlands to Texas College Park High School. It's the Texas Torque. 1477 competed at the Hub City Regional this past weekend and showed that they are ready to compete after a 2016 showing that was probably a little bit below their standards. Turning things around early in 2017, they seeded second and led their alliance to the finals, eventually losing in three tight matches. The 1477 machine is good at gears and still is a shooter that can be turned and ready to go in future events. You can see their progress in two weeks when they compete again back in Texas at the Lone Star Regional. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to see 1477 Shooter get in the play. Uh, that's something we really didn't get to see really almost any of them, especially in the playoffs for. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see as they start the fine tune. But obviously a great performance by them at the Hub City Regional, losing in some tough matches. I mean, they, Tricks are for Kids is just a ridiculously good defender, uh, and it, they were able to slow them down enough uh, where 1477 either had to go all the way around or waste a ton of time trying to get through that lane. Uh, and three great matches we saw at Hub City. It could have went either way. I uh, look forward to seeing Texas Torque uh, move forward. I mean, they, they were literally, their alliance partners climb away from winning in the third match. I mean, all their alliance partner had to do was climb. It didn't happen, and nothing against the alliance partner. It doesn't happen sometimes, but it would have been a very different tune and very different story had that happened. All right, Justin, what do we say, man? All the drama's in the two spot. All the drama's in the two spot. We got two teams left. You guys probably know based on how we've talked. Um, but we always just take this time to guys and just kind of say thank you. Um, thanks for tuning in. Uh, you guys are awesome. This is why we do it. Um, I love hanging out with you. So uh, we'll be back here same time, same place next week. And Tyler, I don't know if you want to talk about any other shows you got going on, or I don't know if you had that plan for later. But no, yeah, we I can mention just a little bit. Uh, so Game Day Live will still continue. Uh, thank you to everybody who tuned in. By the way, we had about ten thousand viewers over the weekend, so we're very ecstatic about that. We release our numbers, by the way. I don't I don't hide that at all. Uh, so thank you to everybody who tuned in for that. Big thanks to uh, Twitch uh, for featuring us on Creative on Sunday. We appreciate that as well. Uh, and so Saturday, Sunday, Game Day Live, we'll be releasing those events as we come along. It's really going to come down to with, unfortunately, how bad camera angles are and how bad some of the webcast qualities are. We're going to need to decide based off of that. Uh, as I mentioned, we're probably locked in for Ontario Ryerson on Saturday or, or Sunday. I forget whatever the second day is. I'm not sure about the other one yet. Uh, but yeah, look forward to that. And then, uh, next week, uh, we might have a show next Monday. We're still working on the details for that as well. Awesome. I almost <clears throat> forgot that we had two more teams to go over. <laughs> All right. right. <laughs> let's do a, let's do a quick chat blast. Who do you think is going to be number one and number two, number one? All right. Who's going to be number probably. one? Who's going to be number probably, one? Uh, Should we give them a hint with the two teams no. that we mean? <laughs> I think they can figure out who the last two teams are. That's what are. I'm saying. I'm yeah. just thinking, but some people might need a little uh, a little help. I'm just going <laughs> to wait for the uh, chat to catch up. Well, that's all right. They're 20, they're 20 seconds behind, so we can get into it by the time chat goes into it. We'll that's be true. Sure. Oh, I see all the answers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm lying. I don't see any. All right. So in our number two <laughs> spot, we have team 811, the <laughs> Rip Knots. <laughs> The rip I, I switched it on you last second. <laughs> I know, I saw it. 811, the rip. No, just kidding. It's 118, the Robonauts from Houston, <laughs> Texas, Clear Creek High School. It's the Robonauts. Always an impressive robot release video. The Robonauts hit the field, and despite some issues, they proved um, they have a good robot. They showed off their hopper uh, auto, and though it wasn't perfect, they will be a force as the season progresses, and 118 is able to iterate some more. At Hub City, 118 was a captain of the number three alliance and were eliminated in the semifinals. But uh, they'll be back in action back in Texas um, at the Lone Star Regional next weekend where we're starting to see more and more of these teams that are going to be there. So that's, that'll be a, a regional to watch in, in two weeks coming up. Yeah, how are they going to get their robot back together? If you guys saw the pictures of that, uh, it was... Man, they had tape on areas. They had zip ties on areas. Uh, I, I have a lot of confidence in them, and hopefully you do too, but that is going to be a lot of work to do with that unbagged time to get the robot back into fighting shape for what they need it to be, especially with that one-week turnaround to fabricate any parts at home. The Riponauts. The Riponauts. <laughs> Love yeah, they're playing back-to-back. -back, they're playing back-to-back -back weeks. That's crazy. No, no they're next weekend. No, the, oh, I'm sorry. Next weekend. So, okay. So the weekend after this. Yeah, there's um Dallas okay, this yeah, weekend. Yeah, yeah. Which, um, I got gotcha. A couple of the teams are playing back-to-back. -back. Okay. Yep. 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 Gotcha. And then yeah, and then Las, there are, Las Vegas regional. Three. That that regional is gonna be nuts. By the way, oh, Las yeah, Vegas but, regional but, later on. I guess there's three back-to-back -back Texas events though. Wow. Um, 
Getting ready for district week, if you ask Dallas me. this week. Yeah, and then next week and the following week will be um, uh, Lone Star there. So interesting. <clears throat> All right, so that leaves our in our number one spot, Team 33 from Auburn. This is one of your favorites too, Justin. From Auburn Hills, yes. Michigan, Notre Dame College Preparatory School. It's the Killer Bees with an overall record of 17-2. and two. Do you think they won an event? They were winners of the Southfield District event. After going impressive 11-1 and one in the qualification rounds, the Bees earned that number one seed. They were by far the best fuel scoring robot at the event. And in a game where fuel is rare, it was quickly 33 who became the crowd favorite. They dominated the field into the finals, where despite a slight hiccup, they took the event win, I mean, it was the, and it was their seventh season in a row, winning their first event of the season. That is awesome. Congrats it's to them. Just super, it's just super impressive to me because it's so hard to come out of the gate consistently good every year after year after year after year, and 33 just does it so well. And I do have to say that um, on 30-15, 33 is probably the favorite team Um uh, amongst the team members, so they're very happy to see 33 is the number one team. Very cool. And we kind of caught that glimpse of them during premiere night. Um, so it was uh, really great to see them uh, in real life. And that's, like you said, Justin, that's, that's just a huge testament to their team and their program that they were on, just having that much success, not only in um, in general, but at those at that first event where it's so hard sometimes to come out <clears> and not have <throat> touched a robot. Yeah, if you get a chance, watch the Southfield event. I mean, they're they're autonomous mode. It's really, really, really close to being at that 40 kPa mark and getting that down consistently. And there, there's no way that you can doubt that they're going to get that down by the next event. It's, of course, you can't see it because it's on the other side of the field and it's blocked by the. Well, the ship, so. yeah, that's that's the same thing with uh, the uh, Ms. Car team at that event too. It's completely blocked uh, by it. So <laughs> you just see it. Yeah, it's. But yeah, you guys got to take a look at that. It's it's going to be, it, it's an amazing bot, and there's a lot more coming with it too. All right, cool. Let's have top twenty-five guys. We made it through week one. Done. Congrats, Justin. All team Justin, you made, made it. it. You're not dead or killed over. <laughs> I know. Thanks to Mike and you for, uh, oh and, yeah, uh, Chrissy for taking some of the pressure off. I was hoping it would be better, but it just isn't. Oh man, that's fine. You got to rest, bud. I mean, yeah, like you said, you need your voice so much for school. So, Alrighty. So that we do have that giveaway coming up, and Christine is finishing. Well, she's finished her drawing, right? Yeah, done she's been that, done she? like an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you want to talk about with your drawing, Christine? Uh, no, I really like this one, though, so I'm kind of sad to be giving it away, but hopefully somebody <clears> that, <throat> you know, oh, isn't Oh, I got it. it. I'm going to get it. <laughs> oh, she says. So, um, so Christine, th this drawing, uh, I mean, we're going to have a lucky winner here in just a little bit. And once again, you have to be uh, either a follower uh, for an entry or a subscriber for five. We're going to talk about a little keys phrase you're going to type in in just a moment to get that entry. Uh, but people can still purchase this, though, if they want to, right? They can get a copy, uh, a digital copy of this as well, too. Where, where can they go for that? Yeah, definitely. So you can head over to my Etsy shop, Wordplay All Day, and it'll be up probably tomorrow afternoon for a $2 digital download. Or you can get your own robot drawn um, for a mere 20 bucks. Oh, so digital download. You know, That's cool. So, uh, yeah, head over there and see what's on the shop. It's been really fun um, drawing a lot of the other team's robots. Um, I'm actually going to be drawing a pretty awesome robot when I find a spare minute for uh, my Corsetto. So... Pretty pumped for that. <clears throat> nice. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Uh, so with that drawing, once again, uh, do make sure that you uh, do that. So what's our what's our keyword for the drawing today, Christine? So tonight's keyword is going to be endeavor. So endeavor. So make sure you uh, type in endeavor. Right. You can. Yeah, I copied what she wrote, so hopefully she spelled it right. <laughs> I hope I spelled it right. Yep. So, uh, so type in endeavor to enter for the uh, drawing. You can type Endeavor as many times as you want. Uh, once again, uh, our subscribers uh, will have 5X. Thank you. We just got a subscription, by the way, so thank you very much. Our, our system is kind of weird right now, but I can probably see it on the chat. It's, uh, if it doesn't keep moving, it's Suspicio, I think it is, who just subscribed. Thank you very much. Uh, and you'll get an opportunity uh, for even more chances, 5X chances for that as well. Um, before we get going and do that drawing, there were a couple questions I want to get to, and we can be really quick on these uh, since we are running short on time. Uh, from what you guys saw, what do you think is the most impressive match that you witnessed this week? And that was asked by uh, HBS 2018. <clears throat> Any match um, where uh, fuel is being scored. 
Yeah, I would just when I watch the uh, eliminations at Southfield, anytime thirty three can just get a good a good flow going. It was just awesome to watch. Agreed. Uh, I'm going to go with the match I saw this morning. Actually, the uh, match of the Israeli regional with uh, Miss Carr scoring forty two kpa in auto was absolutely, that. absolutely incredible. Now. I'm sure some people can contest because people only counted 36 balls being shot, but they did get 40 KP in auto, and that's that's what was counted. And even 36 balls in auto uh, sank. It was absolutely amazing. Yeah, you guys got to check out the Israeli district, and I hope that they get some love on the uh, FRC Top 25 next week because they absolutely looked uh, incredible on that. Very cool. So, all right, uh, next one. Uh, or Christine, did you have a favorite match? I should ask you. I'm sorry. Unmute. She gone. Uh-huh. I mean, watching Brando subscribe. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, Brando. Um, Watching New England hit four rotors when uh, 1058 did that was really impressive. I did not think it was going to happen week one, especially at um, a week one event where there wasn't a lot of fuel being scored. So that was pretty cool. Absolutely. All right. Next question. Uh, PM PM Adden. So sorry if I mispronounced that. Uh, Are we going to talk about any field problems from week one? We kind of discussed that a little bit already, Um, but yeah, so we'll skip through that. We already, we already discussed uh, field problems. Uh, And uh, is it, is it Pauna time? Is that how you pronounce it? I forget already. (laughs) Oh no. All right. Paula, Paula asking. uh, Pauline. (laughs) He's so scissor. God damn it. (laughs) I'm like so wrapped up in myself. (laughs) Who do you think the heavy hitters are at the California events this week? Bro. Oh my goodness! Oh, I don't know, Molly. I love you. I'm the sorry. The warlords are playing this weekend. I see. I, the problem is, is like I I look out so I can see your face, <clears> and <throat> I just can't find it. The Millennium Falcons down. are. I'm just gonna keep going so you can. All right, go ahead. <laughs> the warlords. Oh, this team, the Code Orange. I don't know if this was like a publicity stunt just for us to say your team name, but Code Orange is playing. The Millennium Falcons are playing. So. Yeah, well. there's uh, 254 premieres this week, 973, 971 premieres this week. Uh, definitely a lot of your your top teams are, <laughs> yeah, are coming out this week. Start writing the top 25 now, boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? For sure. Dude, Pauline is never going to watch again. Oh, 254 ever. doesn't play? I thought they did this week. I'm sorry. I talk to you every day. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, no, it's just if you're not wearing a name tag, it's hard for me to remember your name. Dude, so that's dude I thought you said it on purpose. That's no, why I was like, <laughs> no, I, I said Paula on purpose. I wasn't thinking. Of that. I know, but I thought you said Paula. On yes, purpose. I did. You know what? I did mean that on purpose. Or no, yes, okay. I, I thought you should have played it off once you realized you made a yeah. mistake. You're like, uh, yeah, I gave you a chance to play it off, but yeah. you confessed. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> And then she says, guys, like, we all screwed it up. <laughs> yeah, blame me. Blame me. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot, Tyler. Um, I apologize. I think there was one extra question that I didn't get to, but you can re-ask it. Uh, we, can, we can do just a few minutes for post-show since we're going long here. But let's wrap up the uh, show. We got to do this drawing here. Uh, so we have about 80 entries or so, so fantastic. Uh, let's roll who's going to get it. Once again, if you already won in the last couple of weeks, we're not going to uh, again. I think this person just won recently. Mikey Stark. Oh, you already Mikey have Stark. that? Does White Boy Swag 805? I feel like oh, that's the same thing, didn't they? Uh, uh, I don't think so. We'll find out. It was, I, they might have won, uh, won during the uh, RA3D stuff. So it's rigged. It's rigged. If he gets back to me, let him know. He says it's rigged. So we'll, we'll move on and we'll see how we handle that. But no, congratulations, White Boy Swag, for uh, winning. Uh, this contest. Apparently, some people just get really lucky. I swear to God, it's random on how this is. <laughs> it's Nightbot. You just got to give it to them. But yeah, oh, he said he won the fuel. That's what he won. Yeah, he did. Yeah, I remember from RA3D. So yeah, <laughs> changes his name to White Boy Swag 805. That's what you got to do. All right, let's wrap up here. Uh, thank you, everybody, uh, helping make this show possible. If you want more first robotics in your life and you like what we do, we'd be absolutely delighted to have you follow our channel. Just click that little button up there if you're on desktop or laptop. Or click the follow button if you're on mobile. Uh, if you if you really want to help support us, uh, throw us a few bits. Subscribe to us for a few bucks a month or free through Twitch Prime. Uh, thank you very very much to everybody who did that. Uh, real quick, just to uh, recognize uh, everybody who's uh, joined uh, quite recently onto the channel. So thank you for Stone Monkey for giving us a bazillion bits as he always does. He rocks. Uh, we had tons and tons and tons of followers. 
in this thing. So I do want to thank uh, some of our subscribers on here. Uh, Brando for subscribing. Uh, it's Suspicio for subscribing. I, and apparently everybody else is Nips2056, who has somehow hacked our channel. And it says that he's our only other subscriber nowadays. So if somebody else subscribed, thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate it. And thank you, everybody, who followed in the show as well. Uh, I do want to also mention... Uh, we do have new t-shirt designs, uh, newer than new though. We just had just come out uh, on our page at uh, firstupdatesnow.com. Uh, click our store. We have a couple different of the uh, uh, pocket logos that we have, uh, stickers as well. We're going to start working on uh, some of the shows uh, that we're doing for specific shows too. But uh, we did change our pricing a little bit. We're just going to do free shipping. Uh, so whatever we charge for shipping for, it's just included in the price. So it's free. Uh, but very reasonable prices for sure. So we'd be absolutely delighted uh, just to have you guys wear it and tag us for it. Uh, we just we just want to get the name out there, and we appreciate that so much. Uh, and also thank you to Pencil Designs for all their help uh, getting those shirts out, designing those shirts. And they actually designed our new logo. So thank you very much to Alex at Two Pencil Designs. Uh, big thank you to our producer, Nick Olson, working behind the scenes, doing a great job presenting this show, even though he hates me for trying to talk up 148 too much. Uh, Nick does an absolutely fantastic <laughs> job getting this show uh, going to the level it needs to. Uh, the times I produce, you can definitely tell there's a different quality because Nick does an absolutely phenomenal job at making this happen. Uh, we have a full buffet of shows next week, as we mentioned before. So game day live, check it out on Saturday and Sunday at thebluelines.com. Uh, we'll be right on the top there of the Blue Lines page. Uh, when we run, we'll announce that a little bit later on this week. Uh, FRC Top 25 recap is back next Tuesday, so make sure you check that out as well. On behalf of myself, Mike, Justin, Christine, and Nick, I want to thank you all for tuning in. Thank you to all of our moderators in chat making this possible. We'll see you next time on First Updates Now. Talk to you then.